call me. <clears throat> Who don't call you? You wait, you already did. I was gonna say, yeah. Everybody gets one. <laughs> okay. All right, we're ready? Yes. All right, the meeting of the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee is being held on Monday, August 2nd, 2021 starting at 7.06 p.m. in the Aldermatic Chamber, as well as via Zoom teleconference. I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Uh, thank you. We have Alderman Lopez. Here. Alderman Kelly is here in the chamber. Alderman Cleaver. I'm here via Zoom because of mobility issues. Um, Alderman Karen. I'm here in the chamber. Um, and then I believe Alderman Clemens will not be joining us. Right. Okay, we have four members present. I also see Alderman Wilshire, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Clee, um, Alderman Lou. Did I miss anyone? The mayor, Alderman Linda Harriet Gathright. Did I miss anybody else? Nope. Okay, got everyone. Okay. Thank you. Also in attendance is His Honor Mayor Jim Donches. Public comment. Do we have anyone um, that would like to make comment concerning anything that is on the agenda this evening? Please come up. Um, and where's our mic? If you're on Zoom, we tend to take everyone in the chamber first, and then we'll we'll go to Zoom. Just raise your electronic or actual hand for me to see. <coughs> Okay, um, we don't have the mic. Uh oh. Uh, why not just use Alderman Tensa's seat? I was going to say, yeah. get in Alderman Tensa's seat. You're going to get the mic, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> Please. Ah. This is like you Monday of Mondays. Way. You may sit down at that, at the, uh, in the He's chamber. Okay. There's a lot of stuff here. You might feel better here. Yes. Okay. Please state your name and your address, please. In the Blaha, 54 Palm Street, Apartment B. Okay. And what would you like to make comment? You have three minutes. Um, I'd like to make a comment on the police commissioner's board. Um, I don't think that anyone is seriously saying that the governor would be twisting his mustache and trying to manipulate national politics through the police commission board because it's probably just barely a blip on his radar which is the whole reason that we should bring that to a local control it is barely probably a blip on his radar by having local control for something so important as our police commission we would have the ability to make sure that our needs are being met and are focused on by the people who are appointing our police and setting the standard for the department. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone on Zoom that has their hand raised? anyone okay. okay so we also have um, a communication from Alderman Dowd that we want to make sure gets on the record you want to read it oh sure okay <clears throat> um, this is a communication from Alderman Dowd that he asked to have read into the minutes of the meeting says, greetings, unfortunately, I'll be out of town Monday and will be returning Monday night. I hope to still make the personnel committee meeting, but want to provide input just in case I get delayed. I would like to comment on the motion R21143. At the moment, the resolution is on the table and will probably be taken off the table at this evening. I wanted everyone to know that I do not support this legislation. First, any time an action is taken to modify the city charter is a very serious matter. The Board of Aldermen must determine that there is a critical and pending urgency to make a change. The 
determining that it would be then it would then be placed on the ballot to determine it if this line of thinking is okay with the voters of Nashua. Where is the critical requirement to take immediate action on this resolution? Has there been an action by the police commissioners that requires a change? Is the police department having any serious issues caused by the police commission? I do not see any critical issue that would drive this change. There's no need to rush this, rush this action as there is no critical reason to rush it. The criteria for the board taking any action to put a question on the ballot to change the city charter should be driven by something critically wrong with the current way the charter reads. I know some people will take immediate action, but where is, where is the de defect that requires this immediate action? Why can't we do our due diligence, look at the facts and make the right decision? It may end up the same, but what in this action drives an immediate action rather than taking time to look at all aspects of this change? I believe more discussion and input is required to take any final action on this resolution. I support, I support Alderman Kelly's action to table and form a committee of some Alderman city officials and members of the public to discuss the pros and cons of this action. And if determined necessary, the correct question to be put forth, put forth to the voters. I will be, I would be willing to discuss some alternatives that may satisfy those that think this action is necessary, but I do not believe it is in the best interest of the citizens of Nashua to impose local political control over the, over the police department. I've been around Nashua politics for over 40 years, and I can tell you there's been at least four actions that would have been directly and negatively impacted if local politicians had had any control over the police commission. This is one of the items that should be discussed by the committee. So I hope to make the meeting. If I'm not there, my voice will be against the passage of R21-143 and support for the formation of the committee being altered, or being discussed. Sincerely, Alderman Dowd. Thank you. And I see that Charlie Capetta, uh, would you like to speak during public comment? Yep. I went over my three minutes. Charles, can you hear me? Oh, sorry. Hello. I was Dr. Capetta, Chuck Capetta, part of the Board of Health. I just was a quick question. Are we discussing um, the addition of board members tonight or not? No, we will uh, take that up during um, the meeting when the okay. legislation comes forward. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. thank you. All right, I don't see anyone else. So we have communications. We have communication from John Griffith, CFO controller regarding ordinance 02167. We also have a communication from Kimberly Kleiner, administrative services director regarding ordinance 021067, recognizing Juneteenth as a city holiday and revising the holiday section of the unaffiliated employees personnel policies. Okay, seeing no objection, I will accept the communications and place them on file. Next, we have interviews. Mayor, you're up. And this is for the Arts Commission and you are presenting Carol Roby. Yes. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. So I am nominating and have nominated uh, Carol Roby for the National Arts Commission. Um, Ms. Roby is, well, it's Dr. Roby, actually. Uh, she is a longtime pediatrician here in the city, uh, well known as such. Uh, work, has worked, I believe, for both hospitals at various times. Uh, but she is a person who's very interested in the arts and a very accomplished painter in her own right and has been studying uh, painting for the last number of years. Uh, she has also been very involved in many other arts organizations and uh, various initiatives in the arts, uh, has served with the Courier as, uh, on, the, on the advisory committee for that museum who, by the way, are currently doing beginning a project here in Nashville, which I think is going to be really nice over at um, uh, the former TD Bank. Uh, she's also um, uh, been um, involved in so many organizations. I'm not going to even try to go through it all, but uh, she has been recognized in terms of her, uh, the, her work as an artist, the, her painting. She's been given a number of awards in uh, various places here in New England and New York. 
So I think uh, given her community background, given her interest and uh, experience in the arts, she will be a great addition to the National Arts Commission. Um, she, as I mentioned, is, is a uh, physician, a graduate of Harvard College and Harvard Medical School, and um, you know, is well known by many, many in the community in her role as a physician. Uh, with that, I will give you Ms. Roby, who can tell you a little bit about herself uh, and about uh, her interest in the, in the commission. Thank you. Ms. Roby. Hi. Um, nice to meet you all, and thank you for inviting me here. I, um, I have always been uh, an artist on the side, so it was an, um, only I had to learn how to paint, which they, can, they say, the artists say, you should have to draw, draw for 10 years and you can learn to paint in three months which isn't what I did, but, um, but it, it does show you how important drawing is. But anyway, um, I, um, I retired um, six years ago um, from pediatrics and, um, and I've been painting since in an atelier. So it's a traditional kind of um, art, um, representational art um, in oil and um, drawing, still life um, figure, portrait and um, landscape. Um, and that's what I intend to pursue. But um, I've, um, I have um, been involved, oh my, oh yeah, as far as my credentials go, I have, I've been juried into several New England um, associations, the North Shore Art Association and the um, Rockport Art, Art Association and Museum and, and um, help out there some, um, when I can. Um, but what I would like to help out with the uh, National Arts Commission would be to follow um, Lindsay, um, Lindsay um, Rinaldi's um, ideas of maybe trying to coordinate the arts um, more in the city. My husband is also um, currently president of the board of directors of um, Symphony New Hampshire. And so I've been aware of his, um, you know, the various issues around scheduling and how it's really nice to, we have so much going on here and it's nice to make it sure that there aren't overlapping events going on or, or trying to, you know, um, make facilities like the Keefe Auditorium, you know, maximally available. And, um, and what I would do, I would be probably focusing also, you know, particularly on the visual arts and um, trying to coordinate the various art groups. I'm currently just a member of the Hollis Art Association. I, li I do live in Hollis, um, but only 500 feet over the border. <laughs> so um, We're thinking of <clears throat> annexing those streets too. So. <laughs> it's, so. Um, and, uh, and then another thing I, I just started was, um, although I'm not sure it'll be successful, but to try and um, get some art hanging in the Performing Arts Center. Um, there's many um, hanging systems you can hang from wall walls, like the ones that will face the streets or maybe even the higher levels. I'm in talks with the um, committee and um, just starting though. And uh, hopefully um, we can at least hang local art um, and maybe, um, maybe possibly get, you know, curry or lend something, although I'm not sure they're going to be happy with the level of security that we might be able to provide. So that might not work. Um, but, um, um, Lindsay and I are, yeah, are working on that. And, um, it's, um, I've been to one of the meetings and, and I, I thought it was really great the way they, um, you know, the, um, Jersey barriers on the street, how nice those look you know, how that co got coordinated to be um, decorated in a very nice way. And that's, that's a great idea that someone had. I don't know who it was. Thank you. And so um, anyone from the committee have any questions from Ms. Ro well, of course, Alderman Lopez. <laughs> first up. Uh, thanks for volunteering to attend, uh, to, uh, to uh, be interviewed, first of all. Um, have you attended any of the Art Commission meetings? Yes, I have attended um, that one where those things were discussed, yeah. And then so I've, you were familiar with them? Yeah. Um, have you, do you have a copy of Grey's Anatomy? I do. Probably really helpful for learning to draw. Yes, absolutely. Um, I did a lot of scientific illustration too. I, I, I don't know if any of you know Ed, Ed Wilson, E.O. Wilson, who was a behaviorist. I did an illustration for him and some other Harvard professors which was very exciting when I was a freshman. <laughs> well, your resume is definitely very impressive. Uh, I like what your thoughts are and I appreciate you stepping forward to join. Thank you. Okay, anyone else from the committee? Anyone else from the chamber? Alderwoman Wilshire. I'd also like to thank you for stepping up to serve on this committee. You're very well uh, qualified, obviously, <laughs> very well accomplished. Um, 
I'm, <coughs> I'm impressed that we're actually going to get another artist on, on the art commission. Um, I think it's important, and uh, thank you for stepping forward to do this. It, I, it's important to the city, and and your help will be appreciated. Thank you. Yes, and it, I just want to add, it's been nice to see how the um, how um, financial institutions that are supporting the arts really stepped up during COVID. And maybe we can take advantage of some of that, you know, money that's, a, you know, there's a little more money. Obviously, it will go quickly, but um, but maybe we can do something with it. Okay. Anyone? Alderman Kelly. <laughs> I love how you call on people. <laughs> okay. Uh, I also wanted to say thank you. I, obviously, we know each other um, outside of of this uh, chamber. I did not know you painted. Oh yeah. Um, that's so funny. Um, so thank you very much for stepping forward. I know that, you know, Symphony as well as other members of this community could definitely use support in terms of that coordination piece. So I know that both as a board member and also just as someone who loves to go to all the art stuff yeah. in the city. So I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, we appreciate you stepping forward. Again, Mayor, you brought forth someone great for the Art Commission. So. Um, we know that you will bring in a lot of ideas and new things to, to bring forward. So your um, nomination will come up later in the commission, and then um, you'll get notified as to when you'll get sworn in. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Okay, we got application to license, hawkers, peddlers, vendors. There are none. Okay. Appointments by the mayor. I would move to recommend the confirmation of the following reappointment to the airport authority, Joe Duquette, with a term to expire August 31st, 2026. The following reappointment to the Arts Commission, Tina Cassidy, with a term to expire September 1st, 2024. And new appointment, Carol Roby, with a term to expire August 31st, 2024. The following reappointment to the Board of Registrars, Gwen McAuliffe with a term to expire December 31st, 2021. The following reappointments to the Business and Industrial Development Authority, Jason Haviland and Deborah Novotny, both with terms to expire September 30th, 2024, and Bradley Veer with a term to expire September 30th, 2023. The following reappointment to the Capital Improvement Committee, Charles Budris and Scott LeClaire with terms to expire August 1st, 2023, and Lawrence Satella with a term to expire August 1st, 2022. The following reappointments to the city's advisory committee, Breath Quarm, Todgden, and, and Elizabeth Hood, Hood um, with terms to expire October 1st, 2024. Oh, this is going to take all night. Um, <laughs> the following reappointment from alternate to member to the Conservation Commission, Jedediah Crook, with a term to expire December 1st, um, December 31st, 2021. The following reappointment to Cultural Connections, Amanda Martinez, with a term to expire May 1st, 2024. The following reappointment to the Downtown Improvement Committee, Michael Buckley, with a term to expire January 31st, 2024. Edward Hayes, with a term to expire December 31st, 2024. I'm sorry, 2022. And Daniel Skelly, with a term to expire June 1st, 2024. The following reappointment to the Hunter Memorial Board of Trustees, Tammy Crisp, with a term to expire December 31st, 2025. The following, doesn't say appointment or reappointment. It's the, a reappointment. Reappointment to the planning board, Adam <laughs> Varley, with a term to expire March 31st, 2024. The following reappointment to the tax increment financing advisory board, Mike Serrato, Tim Cummings, Eric Druart, David Fredette, Chris Lewis, Sarah Marchant, Tia Phillips, and Angela Spelios with a term to expire September 30th, 2022. The following to reappointment to the Zona Board of Adjustment, Estafia Boris with a term to expire October 1st, 2024, and Mary Ellen McKay with a term to expire September 11th, 2024, by roll call. Okay. Any um, questions from members of the committee? Just procedural. How did we get so many of these at once? Because um, they haven't been keeping track of the expirations. Next month, we'll probably have another 15. Yeah. Be not, happy they're not coming in for interviews. 
Thank you. Would the clerk please call the roll? Excuse me. Excuse me. I have a question. Yes, Alderman Lou. I'm sorry. I um, recognize you were taking questions from the committee first. Um, I just wanted to add a comment. Um, I know some of the committees that um, appointments are done for uh, whose appointments you uh, approve um, involve committees that have, you know, a certain percentage that need to be Nashua citizens or uh, residents. And I wonder if there's a, a way that that is tracked or um, does, is that done in the administration? That should be done within the administration. Okay. All right. My concern is that it seems that frequently or uh, a certain number of times an address on file that is given is a, a business address. It's a fast food restaurant or um, something like that. And my, I feel in, in the um, interest of having uh, these appointments open to a, broad, a wide range of people. Um, it'd be, you know, important to question, are, are we recycling the same people? Um, are we, do we have adequate outreach? Okay, so if, uh, let's take uh, the downtown committee, business committee. The downtown Improvements Committee. Right, that group, okay. that can come from anyone that owns a business within that downtown area. So they may not live in Nashua, but they own the business. I and, understand. Okay, yeah. but there are a lot of people who don't want to be on committees. So that's why you have people who stay on committees for a long period of time. So, you know, anyone who wants to be on a committee, all they have to do is talk to an alderman or call the mayor's office and talk to someone there uh, and get their name on. I, I have referred many people to committees that were interested um, to the administration and some they took, some they didn't feel vetted no, I, I do understand the process. My, the point I wanted to make is um, if we're uh, approving um, people who have moved out of Nashua and it's making the, um, the sorry, the composition of the committee um, so that it no longer complies with, you know, the requirements, I think there's got to, I would like to know there's someone who's looking at that. Well, I think that's a, that's a question you need to ask to administration. Okay. Okay. I will. Okay. May I make another comment? Sure. I also wanted to mention, um, it's, this seems like a perfect opportunity to, uh, when boards come up for, um, uh, for approval um, of appointments, to consider whether there's been a couple of years or whether we've had um, timely reports from them. For instance, the tax increment financing um, committee has not provided um, a report to the Board of Aldermen for several years, as well as the um, airport authority, as well as, uh, oh, I can't think of any offhand, but it just seems like this would be a good opportunity to, um, to reach out and say, can we get you know, that information so, you know, uh, it's okay. just a trigger. So, first of all, we don't ask for reports, but my understanding is that um, most committees, if not all of them, are required to have some kind of meeting notes for all their meetings that should be available to the public if they want them. Um, so I'm looking at um, the Citizens Advisory Committee. They keep very, um, their minutes are not uh, verbatim. Uh, and when they get into discussion about applications and uh, things like that, they do not write that down. They just list who's getting, who's being interviewed, what agency is being interviewed, um, and that discussion further as to allocations will be given later. But that's all out there. So this committee, that's not our job to find out if a, a committee is doing their due diligence with meetings or things like that, that should go to either, um, let's say the Board of Health, if they're not doing their minutes, then that 
discussion should be made to the chairman of the committee or the director of that particular division. Thank you. Um, could I just follow up? My point, and I, I don't, uh, I understand, um, I'm familiar with the minutes that are posted. There are, there is some of the um, committees to which you're approving a reappointment are committees that don't post their minutes. Um, and the one that I've had a problem with is the uh, BIDA committee. They, I, um, I asked them to, to post their minutes, and so we saw a year of minutes put, put up. But um, it seems to me that when you're approving an appointment, if, if these people aren't, if, if that committee is not following ordinance, then should we be approving appointments? So, it's my thought. Okay, that's fine. So here is the thing. One of the things that you can do when appointments are coming up, let's say for that particular committee, and you see a name, Joe, John Smith, and you have some concerns with them because they're not doing X, Y, and Z, you can request from the personnel committee to have that person come to the meeting that their name's coming up for reappointment to have a conversation and to be able to ask those questions. And then it's up to the committee to say, maybe we have an issue, maybe we table this or we approve it and uh, let them know that things aren't what we're getting for information. But anyone, anyone, it doesn't have to be a committee member, it can be anyone on the Board of Aldermen that can ask to have a person that's up for reappointment brought to the chamber to a committee meeting to ask questions as to why X, Y, Z things aren't taking place within that committee. Thank you. You're welcome. Alderman Lopez. Um, I would just say that I acknowledge the optics here because you know, the, in the public comment, a point was made that you know, the concerns about um, the police commission, for example, aren't based out of the possibility that the governor was <coughs> intentionally trying to manipulate the board. It was, um, I believe the, the speaker basically suggested that the governor wouldn't have the same attention to local operations and local priorities and that kind of stuff. And our response to that is local representation and oversight is superior because of this committee. We interview people, we know them, we ask them all the questions. So it is pretty awkward to have like 25 or so um, parade through all at once for reappointments because there's no way even if they came, if they came in, we would be able to interview them all. Um, to some of the earlier comments made, there used to be um, an article or an element of the, the Board of Aldermen agenda, which uh, was basically a liaison report where the committee liaison would write a report to the Board of Aldermen uh, for what they saw, and we, we removed that because it was superfluous. We, the committees do provide their own minutes, they do take their own notes, so, and they, they don't all have the same responsibilities. They don't have to be verbatim notes like the Board of Aldermen uh, necessarily, uh, but there do has to be some kind of record of who's attending and any major motions that are made. Um, and so it is something we have to kind of look at and make sure that we have, um, we are getting those if we're not gonna <coughs> report them ourselves or if our liaison isn't necessarily relaying that. We have been working on that though. Um, I know I worked with uh, C uh, tab uh, cable um, TV and the public access programs that, that post YouTube minutes to sort the, um, the YouTubes that are recorded by committee so that you can at least have a chance of finding the ones you're looking for. So all the infrastructure committees are on a, a list. All of the personnel administrative affairs are on a list. And then those are also put on the, the city's website. In most cases, there's audio recordings and then there's also um, whatever, whatever written uh, minutes are available. So there may be specific examples of committees that are not, um, that are not posting them or there may be also um, some logistical issues. I know I was at the Board of Health meeting uh, for May 5th, I think it was, and that video's not up yet, but that doesn't mean there aren't minutes, and that doesn't mean there aren't agendas. 
Um, sometimes if you don't hit record right, like even at the beginning of this meeting, we had some struggles, you don't get the perfect uh, recording. So if that is happening and an alderman is seeing that happen, then you need to make the rest of us aware of that and we need to talk to whoever the liaison is to that committee and communicate that. I would be very reluctant to look at someone's reappointment as an opportunity to ask some questions about how the whole committee does business because sometimes they may commit or they may be contributing to that, but largely that's a group effort and they rely on support from this, the city clerk's office. So having a person's experience called into question in the middle of an interview in this kind of a format seems like a really good way to deter people from volunteering and, and spending their time. And so we have, to, we have to balance the fact that these are people who are giving their time and their uh, knowledge and experience to different committees against our need to have certain things done. So I recognize Alderman Lou's point. Um, I think we can probably be more attentive to both board makeups or committee makeups and um, the minutes and the agendas. But I think that's something that we and city staff have to do, not just the committee members. Okay, anyone else from the committee? Alderwoman Kelly. I'd just like to respond <clears throat> to Alderman Lopez that it was a computer issue and not a personnel issue. <laughs> At the I beginning agree. of the meeting. <laughs> thank you. The woman, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in, in keeping with what um, Alderwoman Lou said, I agree with her in the fact that sometimes we can't find the minutes are not posted. Um, it was something that bothered me quite a bit, and um, so I complained in my squeaky little way. Um, and I learned that the minutes don't have to be posted. There's nothing that says they have to be put online. Um, they do have to be made available, at least in draft form, upon request within five days of that meeting. But they don't have to be posted online. Uh, it's something that we do. I think I'd love to see all committees do it, but they don't have to be. Um, but there is a requirement that they're available upon request within five days. Um, just something that I learned. In, I, I understand your frustration okay. not being able may to May I respond? It. Yes, you may. Um, I do understand, I'm aware that they don't have to be, but we as a city do post our, our minutes. Um, we have the technology. They don't have to be, that is true. But it's very, uh, uh, um, it discourages, uh, it, it just, just, it makes one step, it makes a hurdle. Um, why a committee would choose not to, I don't know. Uh, why a committee would have a Zoom meeting and choose not to have a, uh, you know, um, the video available afterward, I don't know. But um, I, my feeling is knowing, have peop having someone call the city clerk, because I was also told that they don't have to be published. They they just have to be available for for requests. Um, I, I, to me, that's not really uh, relevant. Uh, but I understand that you wanted to make the so that I understood that. So I appreciate that. Okay. So let's remember we have a lot of boards and commissions out there. We can't have every one of those boards and commissions have a secretary or a clerk getting on the city's website to post all these minutes. So that means there's gonna be a staff person that is designated just to handle that kind of work. So we have to think about that. That's why it's required that there's a paper copy available so that if someone has questions concerning uh, minutes of a particular meeting, they have a chance to review that or get it scanned and, and sent to them. So we have to think about all of these things. You know, we're in, in the 21st century, yes, city aldermanic committees, board of education, board of aldermen, that all has to be posted, but that's posted by people who work within the, within the system and they should have to do that. Am, am I heading in the wrong direction, Madam President? Okay, so, all right, so 
I understand what you're saying. I think administration should be able to, to let all these boards and commissions know that they should make sure they have some kind of minutes. They don't have to be verbatim, um, but the law says this is the time and they should be somewhere where someone can have access to it if they want to. And I understand what you're saying, Alderman Lopez, but sometimes you, uh, if you ask someone that's on a committee that's getting me a point, a general question as to are you following you know, the guidelines and what's happening. I don't think that um, would keep someone from getting reappointed that is very knowledgeable and should be on that particular board of commission. But sometimes, you know, you just need that answer at that particular time. So without further ado, I will ask the clerk, would you like to reread your motion? I would, but I also wanted to comment. Can I do that first? Yes, you may call the woman Kelly. Yeah, protest. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, I was just going to comment that I think this is an interesting discussion, but I also think that, you know, our aldermanic meetings, we go through a lot of, we do them all the time. We learn how to do them. We have someone who comes to our clerks. A lot of these people who are serving on these boards are just volunteering their times as people who are concerned and want to be involved. Um, and I, I would not expect that there was any malice in the not posting of notes. Um, I've, I've worked on, you know, very formal ones and I've worked on pretty informal ones and they're all just trying to get the work done. Okay, so now, now Madam I Clerk, would you please call I'm, the I'm roll? I'm going to call the roll. I'm not going to repeat all the names. Oh, that's no fun. <laughs> Alderman Karen. Yes. <laughs> Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly is a yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. You have four yes. Okay. Motion passes. And all of these people uh, have been reappointed and will be notified. Okay, unfinished business. There is none. New business resolution. There are none. New business ordinances. We have before us 021067, recognizing Juneteenth as a city holiday and revising the holiday section of the unaffiliated employees personnel policies. I'd like to move to recommend final passage or yes, recommend final passage by roll call. Sorry. Okay. Fine. I see that uh, Director Kleiner is here. Would you like to speak on your um, memo, Director Kleiner? Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Um, good evening. Um, so I did provide a memo. Um, to you um, on behalf of the Human Resources Department um, and the Administrative Services Division as a whole um, in speaking with many of the managers um, there was some concern about aligning the holidays with our um, unaffiliated and our UAW employees should this pass. In no way did we want you to take that as a reflection against Juneteenth. We're in full support. Um, and we do think that there is a remedy, um, at least in the short term. But it is best practice that if you are going to include a holiday to a union, that you leave that at the negotiation table. So we would ask you to do that. But in the short term, if you were to approve the legislation in front of you, you and Mayor Donchus closed City Hall, it is practice to pay the employees that could not work. So for instance, sometimes in inclement weather, um, Mayor Donchus closes City Hall halfway through the day or in the morning we pay those employees that could not work at no fault of their own. Um, so that is something that could be used in the meantime. Also, you could do a sidebar um, with any union group and sunset that at the next negotiation of that union. Um, 
So it was a point that we felt we needed to make to you so that you had full disclosure of our concerns, um, but in no way did we want that to deter the legislation. Okay, so do we have any questions from the uh, committee members? I will go with Alderwoman Kelly first. Thank you. I actually was just trying to get some clarification and so you're saying if we approve this then the mayor will close city hall or do we need to change do we need to make changes to the legislation i think um i did read your memo but i'm also just like <laughs> madam chair fully. Um, i think there's there's several different um avenues that could be taken so if there was a holiday um and the holiday was to unaffiliated right now that's the only legislation that's before you um, we do have UAW employees, many, um, that work within the building. Um, so we would not want unaffiliated employees um, to have the holiday and take the holiday and leave only the UAW workers within the building. That would not be a good option. It could be that you allow the mayor to do it as a floating holiday. Some unaffiliated take it and some remain in the building with the UAW employees. Or the mayor could close City Hall because you're recognizing it as a holiday um, and pay the, uh, the UAW employees um, because the City Hall is closed. Or you could offer a sidebar, um, and that is something that someone would have to bring legislation for, um, and sunset that sidebar at the expiration of the contract so that we have the chance to negotiate the holiday into the next union agreement. I could follow up. Yes, you may. Have we ever had this come up where we've had a new federal holiday? How have we handled it in the past, if, do you know? I'm trying to remember the last time we added a federal holiday. I would probably look to some of the aldermen that have been on the board or with the city far longer than I have, but not that I have seen. Okay. I'll let other people, I okay. might come back. All right. Alderman Lopez. I was basically going to ask, do we have to do anything? But I, that answer, I mean, it sounds like we might want to consider actually tabling it to make sure we don't have to do anything if there isn't any urgent need to pass it, but. Right, because you have time. Um, <clears throat> before I get to you, Alderman Dow, uh, my, my question to you is, you're adding another holiday, so are you going to keep all the holidays you have or are you going to swatch, swap it out? I know that there are some holidays that you add in, you know, you have, get this many, and then you add, the mayor adds in like the day after Thanksgiving, whatever. Would you take, let's say, the day after Thanksgiving off in order to get June 13th in there? I mean, that most places have a X amount of holidays, which is like 12 or something. Correct. Um, the challenge here is right now with the amount of floating holidays that we have, they all align. So the unaffiliated and the UAW employees are off on the same days. Adding Juneteenth makes that a little bit more of a challenge. That's not to say that I think that the legislation needs to be amended. I think you can take further actions after this legislation passes. Okay, so you is okay. So you wouldn't recommend um, tabling this. Just pass this and look at additional legislation concerning this particular holiday. Am yes, right? that can be done. Okay, okay, okay. So that Alderman Dowd. Yeah, I have no problem with the reasoning behind the holiday or having the holiday. Uh, my only concern is if we're not giving up another holiday, this is a budget issue. It should go to the budget committee um, because if you just give it to the unaffiliated and then you give it to the UAW, then all the unions are going to want an extra holiday and 
that's a significant amount of money against the budget. And if we don't run this through budget and find out how much that is, I'm not sure that you just pass this without taking that into consideration. Um, so if we're going to add this as an extra holiday, it is a huge expense associated with it. And that should be known before final passage is taken. Okay, so um, my guess would be that maybe of this particular thing, look to maybe tabling this and asking it be sent to budget for review and then brought back and in the meantime work on whatever other piece of legislation because that all would roll into the same thing. Does that sound fair? I have a question. Okay, yep, and Alderwoman Kelly. So I, I think that's fair. I would love to know what the actual cost would be if all the unions, like we have 45,000 for the people who are here in the city, but I'd love to know if every union comes back and says we want this, what that looks like so we can accurately talk about it. I also obviously very much support this and I'm very grateful that we have this as a federal holiday, uh, but I, I know there's some budgetary things we have to look at. Okay, so, do you have some? In response to Alderman Dowd, um, he's entirely correct. We did look at the cost of UAW employees just within City Hall. And I have to say there's UAW employees at most of our divisions, so not including those. Um, you are looking at an additional $28,350 for just those within, within City, City Hall. Hall for that day. So Alderman Dowd's. Okay. So, Madam Clerk, mm. would you be willing to change your motion? Did everyone from the yeah? I'm, I'm fine too. Is I just did everyone from the see, committee speak? Yeah, I didn't see uh, Alderman Cleaver. Did you have anything to add? No, I think that it's an administrative decision as to how the holidays would be divided. Okay. Um, so you're asking me if I would move to table. Um, I would ask procedurally, if I move to table it here, how do we move it to budget? You can ask it to be tabled and referred to budget Great. for review. I move to table and refer to budget. Okay. Um, do we have any questions, concerns from the committee first? No one, anyone else? Okay, clerk, please call the vote. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly's a yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. And that will be tabled and referred to budget. Yes, motion passes. Okay. Uh, I have lots of empty things, but nothing. No, we want to take from the table 2114. Okay. I know I see it. Yep. Okay. All right. So it sounds as though we're moving to take from the table R21 143, proposing an amendment to the city charter relative to the manner of appointments to the National Board of Police Commissioners. I believe we have to roll call that. Yes, please. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly's a yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. That is now before. Do I have to read it again? Yeah, you can. Okay. Um, Go ahead. I was just going to read it. Now before us is R21152. Okay. All right. So we're taking that off the table to have some uh, discussion. Um, Alderman Lopez. Uh, I was going to say, don't we have to make a motion in order to have discussion? If it's taken from the table, we have to then, it's already taken from the table. It's already taken from the table. So you can have but some discussion. But I thought discussion. typically discussion followed a motion. Oh, yes. so I'm sorry. Do I need to move that R21-152 be recommended for final passage for us to discuss it? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think. You can, you, I'm, I'm I, know, I know Alderman Dowd is going to say, you could also recommend that it be forwarded to the board without recommendation. 
or even indefinitely postponed. No, that's not what I was supposed to do. Oh, sorry. Alderman Dowd. It's, it's already been brought up at the previous meeting. You're taking it off the table. It will then be eligible for discussion. That's you do I'm not have to make a motion right. to for final passage because it's back on the table for final passage as that was the original motion. Right. Thank you. So all you need to do is take it from the table. And now you can have That's a discussion. Okay. That's what we did. So okay. Alderman Lopez, do you have? Yeah, I'm in favor of sending this to the Board of Aldermen. Um, when we tabled it last uh, meeting, it was with the understanding that there would be a committee formed or a group made. Um, I. I do not have a clear understanding of exactly whose responsibility or, or role that was. In the meeting, it was suggested that we could, in the, the, the motion, uh, make a motion that we would then create a committee. And at the time, I didn't want to try to make one up on the spot. And I still don't. Um, but I think after a month of a lot of public visibility and a lot of public comment, both by aldermen, police, mayors, um, there should be something that the full board actually takes a vote on instead of um, having it managed in committee. Um, I am interested in pursuing an amendment, um, which would be something of a compromise, but I don't know how feasible it is. So uh, my idea for amendment I would propose at the full board meeting would be to split the, the additional members so that two of the committee members are appointed by the governor and confirmed by the executive council. Two are appointed by the um, president of the Board of Aldermen and confirmed by the Board of Aldermen. And a final one is appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the Board of Aldermen. And in my opinion, that sort of keeps the check in place where an outside party can make an uh, appointment and which is confirmed by another outside party um, while allowing for local control and local representation that doesn't unduly place the nominations or appointments into the hands of, of one person. So it avoids the mayor being accused of, of trying to stack the deck or, or replace the commission. Um, it keeps the aldermen responsible for the people that they're interviewing. Um, but the reason it may not be feasible is because um, when I talked to uh, the legal department about this, number one, it would, that would be significant enough that you would definitely need another public hearing. So. I am not in control of the aldermanic schedule. I don't know when it could go back on the Board of Aldermen <laughs> meeting, but we would have to predict how the Board of Aldermen would would welcome that or would, would receive that amendment and then figure out if we're going to have a public comment and or a public hearing on it. And I don't know if there's enough time left for it to go on the referendum. So that's my thinking is I want to at least have the referendum in its original form, go back to the board of aldermen so that all of the aldermen can actually vote on the issue. Um, and then additionally, um, I would try the amendment and see if there's support for it, knowing that it may not work. And then additionally, in the context that if the petition that's circulating in public does find the support that it needs, maybe a moot point anyway, because it's going to go to the ballot. Okay. So, um, I have a question for the president, but to you, Alderman Lopez, would you recommend uh, sending it back to the full board without a recommendation? Yeah, because I, I want to amend it personally, so yeah. I'm not like recommending this exact form. Okay. Uh, but I do think the full board should be the one that takes this should up. Should make that decision. Okay. So um, I'm going to ask you, uh, Madam President, would you give us an update as to what happened and uh, about the committee that we were trying to get set up? to have this conversation? You bet, happy to do so. Thank you. So after we tabled this, uh, you tabled the legislation, um, we met with the mayor, uh, Commissioner Tolner, Chief Kerrigan and I, um, to discuss having that study group or work group. Um, the request of the mayor was to stop the petition so that the people could hear from both sides of, of the issue, not just the mayor's side. Um, the mayor said he'd have to defer to Alderman Clee who would, and would ask if she would stop the petition drive to meet the request we made. We felt it would be disingenuous for the mayor and people that are uh, moving forward with the petition to meet with us to discuss other things. It, it just, you know, he's on one hand, in one hand still getting petitions and in the other hand trying to work this out. So. 
we decided that wasn't the best route to go because uh, I guess Alderman Clee had decided that they didn't want to stop getting the petitions. So, you know, we felt this needed to start without the petitions um, because we feel there's got to be some open discussion. There's been no open discussion to speak of, um, you know, and what's going on out in the community is that the mayor is giving his side of things, you know, and, and he's got all kinds of people out there getting petitions signed for him. So I think it's unfair. I, I'm disappointed that this is the way they, they wanted to do it. It, it. It's essentially going around this board and saying, you know, hey, too bad. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna do it anyway without even having open discussion with all of the citizens, not just the po political party that they're going after. Um, I, I'm very disappointed and feel that's very unfair for the mayor to be involved in that. Um, the other thing that I have a problem with is that this election, this upcoming election is a midterm election. Nobody, nobody goes out to vote. It's the lowest turnout of any election. And that's not fair either. And, and I think they did that knowing that, well, the mayor can rally his troops to get people out there, you know, and that's who he's, you know, knocking on doors asking. Um, it just, I just don't like, you know, what's going on. Um, I don't like that it's a, a, a low turnout election that this is going on the ballot. I think it's unfair to all the voters and all the people of the city because, you know, he, he the mayor decided, no, we're not gonna have a work study group. We're not gonna be involved with one. Well, what does that tell you? Why? What's the urgency? Why is this so have to happen right now this year? We've had very little discussion as a city about why this needs to happen. In my opinion, it doesn't need to happen. They want it to happen. If there were some you know, burning issue, if the police commission were doing things that the city didn't agree with, I mean, certainly we, we should take action. But I don't see that. I just don't see it. Um, the other thing, one of the other reasons for this, you know, the need for this is that only one woman has been on the commission. Well, how many women have been on the fire commission? Mm -hmm. One, maybe? And, and probably over the same hundred years. You know, it, it's <clears throat> typically not, it, it, I don't know, it's typically not something that I believe is worthy of changing the commission. It's just not. Um, I, I really don't understand what the urgency is and why it has to go on this ballot. And it, it doesn't, they just want it to. They, they can get their troops out there, they can get their voters out there, you know, good for them. But I don't think they're doing the citizens a favor at all. So um, I, I'm gonna ask this committee and, and because I was, the one that spoke up and said I'd do a work group study committee, that we move forward with that anyway. I think you should. You know, because I think people need to know before they go to the polls, both sides, all sides, they need to, we need to have a, a citywide discussion about this issue. It's a big issue and it's an important issue. And to, to rush it through because if somebody wants it and there's no burning need for it, I think is wrong. And I'm very disappointed in those who have pushed it that way. Okay. May I ask you a question and I'm not sure if um, it might have to be asked at the full board meeting. If um, we send this to the Board of Aldermen uh, with no recommendation and the board votes against this, does that kill the petition or does that? It doesn't, so it so it's moved. No, right. the, he's doing an end run around the yeah, board. Okay, is what right. that's what that's I thought. Exactly but it. okay, an end run one around the board. One at a time. Okay. Period. All right. Any other um, committee member? Okay. Let me get Alderman Kelly, and then you, Alderman Lopez. I won't. I won't want to do a diatribe right at this moment. I will just ask some clarifying questions. So, if the petition gets enough, it goes on the ballot no matter what. Well, if, if the state approves it. Right. Yeah. And the state approves it. It goes on. If the Board of Aldermen were to take up something like Alderman Lopez was saying and, and offer some suggestions, changes, just like put aside the fact that maybe we don't have enough time anymore, would they both go on the ballot? If we decided, yes, we want the 211 and we think that's an interesting thing to put in front, would they both go on the ballot? 
I don't think that so. best legal. I don't, I don't, I don't think I wish, that, I I wish think it, Attorney Bolton was here. Okay, that was the question Alderman Dowd, you probably know everything, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I don't know if I'd go that far, oh, but. Well. <laughs> He's done some research. Um, <laughs> there's a couple things. One, I don't think you bring it back to the full board of Alderman to debate like it was a committee meeting. If you want to study this and come up with the right way to do things, you form a committee and then make recommendations back to this committee or the full board. Um, you've read my, I'm not going to reiterate my comments that you read. Um, there is no glaring issue causing this to be of immediate concern. So if we're going to do it or make any changes, we should do it right and not just force this down the throat and and tell people that, oh my God, we don't have local control, that, that's ridiculous. If the petitions are successful, they come back to the Board of Aldermen and we decide whether the petition goes forward. Yeah. We could say no, and the petition's dead. And if you change anything to the petition, it's going to have to go back to Concord and go through the entire review process again. So any amendments that are made uh, okay. are not part of that petition because if they were to be considered as part of that commission, they would have to go back to Concord and go through the three people that have to approve it. Right. As I stated in my comments before, there is no outstanding reason to push this forward in any urgent manner. If if it's if the committee that gets formed and this board determines that that they want to have a question on the ballot it should be during the mayoral run which is two years from now there is absolutely absolutely no reason to push this for this upcoming election and and i think it's just going to cause a political fiasco for this upcoming election if it tries to get on the ballot. All right, Alderman Lopez. Um, so with respect to Alderman Dowd, um, I think legal gave me the opinion that per state RSAs, if the petition does reach its number, we can't turn it down. So we can confirm with legal whether that's accurate or not. But that was, the, that was what they had told me in the past. Um, additionally, um, I am supportive of a committee and I thought that was the expectation that was set last month. At no point was it required when I was tabling it or set as a stipulation that the mayor would retract his petition or have, have the public unsign whatever. I think the, the mayor is not himself the sole person running the, the petition. And I think it's not fair to call people who are signing the petition solely his people. He's not running for office this term. So this suggests that they aren't showing up to vote for him. They're showing up because they care about the issue. Um, and that's where my concern about objectivity comes from. Because there's a lot of passion and there's a lot of finger pointing. And some of our very much respected leaders in the city have very different and very divisive ideas about how this should move forward which could largely be summarized as they don't think it should. So for me, the urgency is the question has been put before us, should we allow the people of Nashua to vote on this issue or not? And so I feel like we need to at least have the full board weigh in on this. Um, whether we create a committee to study it further or not, I, I would support the creation of a committee whether the mayor is willing to participate or not. But I am not, I am not of the opinion that we should be sending ultimatums for his participation and then blaming him for not forming the committee that we didn't form. So I do think we should send this back to the full board. Um, I think we should be willing to create a commission, a committee that is not just the board of aldermen and just the um, police commission, but does include a neutral party because I don't want to see the petition move forward, it end up on the ballot, and then the committee that we are organizing in order to gather consensus and a, and a fair um, understanding of what the, the greater national population is looking for 
instead start focusing on only one aspect of that, whether it should happen, whether it shouldn't happen. Yeah, I agree that a referendum item needs to be taken seriously, and a ballot item, particularly a charter change, needs to be um, taken with great gravity. But I think the bar is being set somewhat conveniently here that it must be a burning crisis. I don't think we should wait until there's a disaster unfolding for us to do this, and I don't think that should be the the driving argument behind making a charter amendment. In this particular case, the idea is to increase local control, stabilize the size of the board so that there's five instead of three, and, and make sure that it represents us. I, there's been no claims that the current police department is a corrupt system and is doomed to fail. And there definitely shouldn't be any accusations of the same towards the board of aldermen or the mayor if what we're talking about is specifically a ballot referendum item. I think we need to look at collectively how we are approaching the city of Nashville with this because right now it's coming out in newspaper articles and blogs and opinions and it's not a dialogue. And I would have liked to see a commission do that. Um, we, there are groups like Nashville Listens who could be a facilitator for this. Um, we could use our own community development um, models for um, the, the city planning process, the um, master plan. But if we are gonna say that we're planning to create a committee, we need to create the committee. And I think either way, this should go back to the full board so that the aldermen who are expressing opinions here can actually vote yay or nay to back their opinion up for the record. Okay, so I, I think, um, there you go. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I think that when we talked about the setting up this committee, having the uh, um, setting up this committee, I, I don't think we were looking at it to be just uh, the police commission and someone from in someone from the board, but outside the community, getting those kind of um, people on board and having the study done. Um, and I have to agree with Alderman Wilshire. This was brought to gather very quickly, and I'm sorry, I have two comments. This is not about diversity. This is about control, totally control. And if you, every time someone says that you want the citizens of this city to have some say in it, well, they're not getting any say just because the mayor and the president of the Board of Aldermen is making these choices. They're making the choices based on their needs and what they feel is a person that should be sitting on that board. If you want to really make that about the citizens knowing who these commissioners are, then let them run for that police commission just like they do fire commission or board of public works. And every time you talk about we're a wonderful department, we have fabulous people, the commissioners are doing their job because if they're not doing their jobs, we would hear about it. We would have issues all the way down, top to bottom. So it just makes me crazy to think that this was a need that had to happen. And I said that before, when the mayor brought that survey out, he didn't send it to anybody. He didn't even have a, con he didn't have the courtesy to have a conversation with this board. He didn't have the courtesy to have a conversation with the police department as to what he was looking to do. And I'm sorry, that is not the way you do that. And I, I understand that you'd like to see more people and that's, that's fine, but we have a hard enough time for other committees to get people to volunteer to be part of it. That's why there are people on some of these committees who have been there 10, 12, 15 years, because people don't want to get involved. And you know, and I know, I know there are other people doing this, but when I get phone calls or I'm out and someone tells me they see the mayor and members of this board out in public during the day getting signatures and they're looking at me for answers? No, I have no answer. That's their, if that's what they wanna do during the day, that's fine. But don't start attacking other members of the board 
because you don't like what they're doing. So, you know, when I keep hearing this about diversity and this, and well, if that's what you want, then set it up so these police commissioners are all elected. And now you've got true citizen participation in who sits on those on that particular board. And that's all I have to say. But I understand if you want to bring this to the board, we'll talk about that change. But I think it's still important for the president to set up something as quickly as she can. And we see what happens next week at the full board meeting. Alderman, I'm sorry, Alderman Kelly. Uh, thank you. So I, I was, I agree that the study committee, the conversation with the community has to happen no matter what. I think we've, we've talked about this, even around this, you, we all don't agree. And I think that that's a, it's a microcosm, but like we don't, we are probably the most educated on this and we don't all agree. So I think we need to go out and, and really have those conversations. So I want to make sure that we set it up. I know there were concerns about it feeling disingenuous if people are having these conversations but won't be able to make changes to it. Um, so I think we just need to be clear about that. There is a petition, it might be on the ballot, but we still want to talk about it because even if it goes on the ballot, we can still talk about what these changes could do, would do, what could we potentially, I mean, it's not like it going on the ballot is the end of the discussion. Um, so I think we should absolutely do that. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about sending it to the board with no recommendation though. I, I'm a huge advocate for working stuff out in committee. Um, you know how it gets with 15 people in a room and you know, you sit on these committees to do the hard work and have, have a recommendation. Um, I do agree that there's a lot of discussion um, that will be had either way, um, but I would love to see this, this committee do something other than no recommendation. Okay. So, okay, we can, we can talk about that. Um, and you also have to remember, you know, just because it may end up on the, a ballot doesn't mean it would pass. So I'll do it, a woman, Clee, I'll let you speak. Thank, thank you very much, um, Madam Chair. And I'd like to start with, um, I respect every single member of this board, regardless of what has or hasn't been said. Um, and I do want to um, clarify something. Um, Madam President, you made a comment about um, that I said no to the um, stopping the petition, and that was incorrect. I um, spoke with the commissioners, or one commissioner, I should say, um, and at that point, that particular commissioner asked me if I would stop this, and I very specifically said that, no, I would not stop it because it wasn't my place to stop it. I didn't start it. I'd had nothing to do with the Citizens Commission, and I have never gone out to get signatures. And um, so I just wanted to clarify that um, in general. And um, I, I appreciated that uh, um, Madam Chair made a comment about don't attack other members of the board, because I agree. We should agree to disagree um, regardless how we feel. I don't think anybody on this board is taking a stance in any way, shape, or form. Um, to hurt anybody else or to even hurt our police or commissioners. Um, I, I hope it's appropriate for me to speak as to why I um, was one of the prime sponsors and, it, and am one of the prime sponsors of this uh, particular, um, and, I, and I've spoken about it before. There are a lot of issues, and I'm not going to keep reiterating everything that I've said before, but the one thing that does bother me the most is that um, in Concord, and first let me start with, this is not political because, as it's been pointed out, the commissioners have been appointed by one party and have been reappointed by another party. So that's got nothing to do with the politics of it. But what does have to do with it is that Concord, as, as I see it, um, continues to take away more and more power from us. They continue to um, tell us what we can do, what we can't do. We are a Dillon rule state, and as such, they have the power to do that. Um, even as something as simple as trying to change the, the one little thing that the municipalities can do by taking out a comment of um, the, the municipality has the right um, to put in temporary or emergency changes based on the health and well-being of their citizens. Um, they are trying to get that out of our, um, 
out of the rules, regulations, and constitution, which would mean that, in other words, before the city could do something such as the mask mandate, if it were done in um, October, when we're not in session, they would have to call an emergency session. And if either body said no, then it would have to wait until January. So that's just one little thing. This is something that, that continues to happen. Considering that all other municipalities have um, changed the way that they've done it, and they've gone back to, or, or 12, not all, I, I should say the 12 that had lost it, um, had gone back to this. I don't see any reason why. Um, is there a critical need for this? Probably not. Um, is there a, a, a need? Because I think local control, and everybody likes to use the word power grab and control and so on. I don't look at it that way. I just look at the city of Nashua should have control over the city of Nashua. So if that's control, yes, I don't believe it's a power grab by any one person. Um, and I agree with you, um, um, Madam Chair, that um, we shouldn't be discussing necessarily diversity or as um, President Wilshire had mentioned, um, women and so on. You've never heard me talk about that. You've never heard me mention about um, a woman of, of such. I may have at one point said it, but when it was brought up that we should, we should demand this, I said no, I wanted the best person to be put in the job for it. Um, when I first started talking about this, I actually talked to um, President Wilshire before anything was put into writing, just to give her a heads up as, as a, a polite um, and proper thing to do. Um, at that point, I knew that she would not be in favor of it, um, and I respect that, and I respect anybody else who's not in favor of it, and I think probably I am one of the few people that are on the board that are truly in favor of it. But I'm also open to suggestions of changes and so on, and I've heard that over and over again, and I think that we, we should look at the changes. Now, as far as the um, committees are concerned, I can say that um, I did send a message out asking when we had that, could I be on the committee? But I understood because I, I had such a strong feeling of it. Um, I have not heard back one way or the other as to whether or not I could be on that, on that committee. And I do understand, as I pointed out in my message, that because I have a strong feeling, they may not want someone um, such as myself on it. Um, I think that the making um, assumptions that we're doing this to do midterm, I don't think that's the case. I think the truth of the matter is um, the time is ready, and I see more and more of, as I pointed out, Concord taking over control. It has nothing to do with whether or not I like this governor or the next governor or the past governors. I think it's time right now for NASA to take over. We are, as I pointed out before, the, the way the process works is however the name gets to the governor, he, puts, he or she puts the, the, the person's name through. It goes to the board of executive um, council. One is District 5, which is <coughs> Nashua, is part of District 5, as is Hollis and Milford and Brookline, and there's a, a whole slew of other communities. Um, someone pointed out at one point, well, we elected that person. We elected that person to be the... Um, the, the spokesperson <coughs> for Nashua. District 5 elected that person. Not one ward in Nashua elected that person. So the person that Nashua did not elect is the voice for Nashua. Just putting it out there, again, I'm not getting political because um, I really don't care one way or the other. I like the idea that it now goes from 3 to 5. I like the idea that it goes through this committee here, once it gets past this committee, then it goes to the Board of Aldermen. I think that's fair. I think that's more transparent. People say, well, you could contact Concord. They could, they're not watching Concord. The people from Nashua are not watching Concord, but they are watching us. They're watching what we do, and they're looking for the minutes, and they're looking for the resumes, and they're looking at the resumes. Um, it's been pointed out many times. We have people here on all sides um, of the conversation to argue for and against. I, you know, maybe it would have been better if we had an extra year, or we had an extra six months or so on. But I think we can move forward. I do think it's disingenuous if we don't put those committees together. I was asked point blank, how about good faith? You tell them to stop that meeting. I'm not about to tell anybody, any citizen to stop what they're doing. That is their right to do it. Did, would anybody that was on that, um, on the board of aldermen at the time that the, um, the last 
um, citizens uh, petition went through for the spending cap. Did anybody here say they should stop that and we'll kind of come up with a compromise? I don't think so. Um, I don't know how long it was from the beginning of that to the end of this. The fact that the mayor is um, actively seeking signatures, again, that is his right. I have not done that. Um, I don't know, maybe moving forward I will, seeing that people are turning around saying. I was actually accused of being standing outside of the, uh, the liquor store collecting uh, signatures. And while I was very complimented, because I think she was about 20 years old versus my 60 years old. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> she also has dark hair and I have blonde hair, but putting all that aside, it was not me and I have not been there. Um, so I do appreciate that compliment, but that was not what happened. So um, again, I respect everybody's opinion. Um, I hope that it did not come off as that I was attacking anybody because I do not mean that. Um, however this shakes out is how it shakes out and I respect the opinion of my colleagues as well as the opinion of the public. So thank you so much for letting me have time. You're welcome. Um, Alderman Cleaver. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Chair. I believe we should recommend this go to the board for final passage. I mean, the local control issue is a given and, and absolutely necessary being the only city in the state that has this type of arrangement, which is un not functional in my opinion, long-term. I think we've been very, very fortunate that the police commission has operated as well as it has. It's not to say it's going to operate as well as it has in the future. And it has nothing to do with state uh, governor or executive council or anything else. This is a city issue. It should remain a city issue. It should be put to the city, citizens of the city to, for a vote. And I'm strongly in favor of putting it on the ballot, but in, in any case, it should go to the full board and not to a committee, but to the full board with a recommendation of ought to pass. Okay, thank you. Um, Alderman O'Brien and then Alderman Dow. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want, I'll be very brief, but I just want to start off. Uh, this is uh, my time on this board. This is one of the saddest issues I ever seen uh, by behavior of several members of this board. Uh, let's face it, this is a very, an issue that I want to can even pass the stink test. And what I mean, if you take your nose and you sniff the air, I don't smell smoke. There's nothing on fire on this particular issue. This, by our duty of being members of the Board of Aldermen for the city of Nashua, it is our fiduciary responsibility to take a concept such as what is presented in this particular petition and to vet it within the committee and make the strongest recommendation that we can to the public. Also, that does not have to go on. We can change the charter without it really going too much further. But the point is, taking away the opportunity of the Board of Aldermen to do their duty is a very sad set of affairs. Now, somebody will bring up well, you know, the politics and everything else. Well, if you're subverting the politics or the fiscal duty of the alderman, is that not political? Let's look at the crystal ball. Who's trying to force one particular idea, unvetted, never went to a committee, never saw the light of day, and all of a sudden, it's being brought out to the public to decide. It may be the best idea to send sliced bread. I don't know. But compared to other ideas, by what I think I serve with, other brilliant people on this board, including the mayor, members of the police commission, I think we could come up with a viable solution that could perhaps maybe work. My recommendation to the committee here is to keep it on the table. Allow our president the ability to do her duty as president of the Board of Aldermen to come up with the committee and to look at this. And because there is a committee, I'm sure as you know, even though you're not a member of the committee, here I am, and thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing me to speak, 
but even if you're not a member of that committee, you do have a voice. But you know something? I feel the way this thing is going, my voice is not being heard. Not when I have other people going out, where's the good faith, the political good faith? And if some of those people that I serve with up in Concord, if that ever happened up there, I could see the wailing and the gnashing of the teeth. All I ask is the courtesy and to do what this board is really supposed to do. Look at the issue, discuss it, and then bring the solution forward. We may find there's a dire need. We may find there may not be a need, but that is the question. So therefore, I was, would like to see this stay on the table, allow our president the opportunity to do her duty as charged by this committee and appoint the commission, a uh, committee that will look at this and to come forward with it and a perfect re uh, recommendation that meets the needs of all concerned, including the citizens of Nashville. That's what we do. We represent their voice. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Um, Alderman Dowd and then Alderman Wilshire. Yeah, just a couple of points in uh, support of, of a commission. I, I keep hearing that towns and Smith cities have gone back. Oh, we're the only ones. Well, one of the things that that committee ought to look at is how are they doing? Are they in a position where they might want to go back the other way? Have things, you know, gone to heck in a handbasket? We don't know that. That committee could find that out. <clears throat> the other thing is that no one on the board of aldermen or that committee should be voting on this matter unless they know all of the investigations that have taken place relative to the mayors and board of aldermen in the past. 30 years, and there have been a lot, mm -hmm. and a superintendent of schools. And you do not want any political influence in those types of investigations. How many people here know that some of the Board of Aldermen in past years went to prison, and, if, and, and that the investigations were tried to be manipulated by local officials? No. You don't want that. But anybody voting on this should have the whole history behind that and know what they're voting for. I've been around for a little while. I won't say how long. <laughs> and I've been through all of these, and I know. Um, the other thing is, if, if it got approved similar to the way it's being looked at right now, in no way should a police commissioner be removed from office if it was down to the Board of Aldermen, unless it was a super majority. And that's not the way it reads right now. Right. Should be 10 votes. You know, we do that on budget. You know, th this is a critical, critical thing because if you remove somebody from being a police commissioner by action of the Board of Aldermen, you're impacting that person's life. You're putting a black mark on them this is not a court of law. So it ought to be a very good reason and it ought to take a super majority. That's not on the current thing that people are trying to put on the ballot. And the other thing that bothers me that was brought up is, much as I like the mayor, why is the mayor out during the day when he's supposed to be doing his mayoral functions getting signatures on a petition? Unless he's running for office he isn't right now. To me, that, that's an issue. And, the, and I've also heard that young people are out there doing it, and they're just following what they've been told. And the people that are signing it are saying, oh my god, that sounds like it's great for the city of Nashville, but they don't have the full story. And the committee would be able to come up with a full story and make recommendations that make sense. I'll tell you, would I like to see a woman on the board of the police commissioners or on the police commissioners? Yes. Would I like to see a person of color? Absolutely. And you get a trifecta if you have a woman that's of color on the board because I think that brings a whole new perspective. 
So I'm not <laughs> against that. But there are other ways of doing it. Uh, some of the things that I've thought about is you could have it so that the mayor and the board of aldermen come up with a list of people to, to send to the governor and the executive council, the people that we'd like to see appointed. They could pick from that list, but they still get the choice. But we give them the names to choose from. They don't come up with their own. I mean, there are different things. And this committee could figure that out. But right now, the way it's going right now, it's, it's one-sided. And I, I think if the people, even the people that signed the, commi the committee, signed the petition, if they had the full story, may take their name off. And I do know, I can tell you right now, if it ever gets to the ballot, there are people who want to spend a lot of money out there to kill it. And when you kill it, all your options are dead. You know, if you, if, if, if you want to extend it to five and you want a woman or someone of color on that board, you can work that out through this committee. If you lose in, if you lose in, the, in the election, you're done. It's done. End of story. And there'll be a lot of people against this in the election. So I think the fairest way to do this is to appoint a commission, do the investigation, get all the facts, and put the right question on the ballot for the people to consider. Okay. Alderman Wilshire and then Alderwoman Kelly. Thank you. I, I just wanted to go back to uh, something that Alderman O'Brien said about good faith. When I talked about starting this committee, I was acting in good faith by going to the mayor and talking to him about this committee. I mean, I don't, I wanted to work with the mayor, but he said no. And I wasn't the one that brought your name up, Alderman Clee. It was the mayor. So just so that he's the one that told me that. I didn't make it up or bring it up. He did. Um, and I think we are doing a disservice to the to the community by not giving them all the information. I think it's unfair and uh, I'm not gonna support it. So that's kind of obvious, I guess. Okay. Alderwoman Kelly and then Alderman Mulchow. Okay. Um, so the thing that I wanna point out is I actually think the mayor could be right in this point. This could be the right this way to go. But I think unless we talk about it, it's not a black or white. It's not a, it has to be five, it has to be three. That's it. Like there's plenty and there've been so many recommendations just you know tonight appointed you know two two one like there, it's it's not this like do it or don't do it and that's the problem that i have is that this is a one-way conversation what has been drafted into petition and or this ordinance was brought forward from one person as their idea as how to fix this our job as aldermen is to vet that and have a conversation about it and that's being shut down so I think that we need to absolutely form this committee, no matter what happens with the ballot. Let me know how I can help because I think that's important. And I think these conversations need to continue. And I don't know what to do about this piece of legislation. Alderwoman Lowe and then Alderman Lopez. Thank you, Ma Madam Chairwoman. Um, so it's, I, I feel it's really hard to look at this uh, question without remembering the argument we all we all learned of an argument uh, that was initially put out there and I know I'm very happy uh, well and it included um, you know because of the way it is now you know that for some reason has resulted in there's no women there have been no women on that commission because of the way it is now, there have been no uh, people of color on that commission. And because of the way it is now, there's no local control. And none of that made any logical sense to me. And I was r really appreciate that um, Alderman Clee um, gave her e e explanation of why she was in favor of it. Because that's what I hoped would happen t today. I, I've heard 
um, my colleagues who agree with me um, that are not in favor of this, but I still could not understand the rationale um, after what has been discussed and um, for any remaining people who are in, in favor of it. Um, I've heard that, uh, I've heard that this, this current method is not functional long term. And I don't understand, uh, you know, what's the basis for that claim? In what way is it not, not functional long term? I've heard that, you know, that our state government is becoming power hungry and that this is something we can do here in Nashua to react or to respond to what we don't like with, that is going on in, in Concord. But to really, to really look at what we have now and to identify why we want to throw it out, I, I don't hear anyone logically giving a really good reason. Um, my husband uh, explained to me or answered my question at one point when I said, why? you know, all these other boards, everything I knew about the boards uh, and the commissions um, in Nashua government were appointed, lo uh, were appointed by the mayor or the board of aldermen, let's say. And he explained to me the history and that it was supposed to render some, some distance so that the police department who may have to investigate local businesses or local uh, politicians or local uh, administration, don't have the pressure that um, they need to stay on good terms with the mayor. And it made sense. Um, I, I didn't question it and it still makes sense to me. Um, I know the commissioners are all from Nashua. And to me, they're, they're upstanding people. I, I don't hear a lot of what goes on in the meetings because I'm trying to stay objective, or I am staying objective. I feel that is a way that I can, uh, you know, better do that. But so um, I don't feel that I, I don't feel that the reason this is a good idea has been clarified, has been really explained. I've asked, why would we not speak with the, the governor and say, you know, we really want uh, you to consider um, or to reach out or, you know, we want more diversity on this board. We'd like to see a woman uh, and to have a conversation. But my understanding is that when, when people I know have asked, told the mayor that they would be interested in serving on the board uh, of, on the commission, he hasn't said a thing about how you can do that. So when he's called it uh, secretive, I objected to that in, in my head because I knew that he, he has not done anything to clarify to people who have expressed an interest that this is the this is the way you go about it i i just wanted to also say um it is sad it's it's sad that we've had a public hearing we've heard a majority of people say they're for this change and now we're vetting it and i i you know i i spoke before I think that any time we have a change of this uh, of this weight, we should send it to committee right away. We should let the discussion come out. You know, I hope everyone who has had a chance to explain why they to, or to make a an argument for why they think this is a good idea has done it, because I do think that in this committee, this should all be hashed out as, as well as possible. Um, everyone that wanted to come in or, or, or to join us and explain why we're wrong or, or why it's correct that
this non-existent problem is really there and that things have to change. But I haven't heard any, any logic, any ex good explanation. Just saying local control doesn't mean, doesn't mean it's going to be good because you have to look at how much vetting is done when appointments are made. And I don't think that, I don't feel encouraged by that. Uh, I, I think that we have to remember, I hope this committee remembers that if you don't think this is a good uh, a piece of legislation, kill it. Um, we, we don't have, I mean, that sends a message. I, I, that, I think that's what it was sent, it was sent here to, to be voted on. Um, I do wish, I do wish that it went to committee. I don't see why I can't from this committee. Why can't this committee make a subcommittee? Why do we have to, you know, have another body put, you know, make that action? So, uh, those are my questions and thoughts. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Lopez. Um, so I want to reiterate my, um, hope that we can move this to the full board because the committee members are currently outnumbered by full board members who are of a specific mindset um, and have a lot to say about it but are not able to vote the way that they say it. So I think the fairest thing to do is to move it to the full board and let everybody vote on it. While I appreciate that the committee is supposed to do certain amounts of work, um, I think we had a possible resolution last month which wasn't, wasn't executed. I think we still have the opportunity to create a committee and that can be done before we go to, before it, it is on the full board's um, agenda. If the full board is comfortable voting this down, then the full board should do that. I don't think they should be killed in committee or procedurally. I'm very uncomfortable with what that represents to people who feel like they need to be represented and feel like they need to have a voice and feel like they, they're not satisfied with the way that the committee is. I signed the petition myself because I think the petition itself offers a little bit more latitude in terms of um, bringing the question up. I don't necessarily think that the aldermanic process for pushing this forward is, is perfect. I think it has a problem with a time limitation and that's what we're running up against. This was introduced in June, so we have had weeks to work on it. I think a lot of solutions can be presented not necessarily with the authentic intent of actually following through on any of them. So if, if any of the aldermen have ideas about changing numbers or making amendments, feel free to propose them, but we should do that at the full board and we should have that, this conversation with all of the aldermen <coughs> instead of at a committee because I feel we have done the committee process. We had a pretty intensive and extensive meeting last month. This issue does need more work if we're going to put the work in, but I don't be being pessimistic. I don't anticipate that happening. I think this is an effort to just end it. And I don't think that's a good message to send to, to, to voters. Okay, so <clears throat> quick question, Madam Chair. You can still appoint a committee, okay? We can still send this to the board. We can send it without a recommendation, or you can send it or final passage, or you can send it to kill it. Doesn't keep us from having a group, having conversations with some of the things that Alderman Dowd talked about that they should be discussing. Unfortunately, this came at the wrong time. And then you've got people out there putting a petition together. So no matter what you do with this, if they, pass, if they get the numbers for the petition, and then it goes to the state, you, you, as Alderman Dow, you can't have two, basically the same thing twice on the ballot. I don't think that legally you can do that. So, you know, this committee has to decide what you want to do with this piece of legislation. And in the meantime, the president will proceed without the mayor, if that's if that's what he feels he doesn't want to be involved in, in um, picking the people who should be able to do that. And it doesn't have to be just 
this, it can be outside group that, as you talked about, Alderman Lopez, to have some conversation and to come back with whatever. But it's true, if this thing gets defeated in November, it's a long time coming before you bring this back. So. Um, to that point. Yes. Is, would it be not uh, if the, I think we're talking about the petition. If the petition is defeated, there isn't actually anything legislatively saying that next year's board can't just reintroduce something new or that citizens can't sign it. I don't think, I don't think that's well, actually. You'd have to have a conversation again about a chart, but this would be another charter change. So, you know. But I, I don't know. I, I think I, some people there are several be. aldermen here with considerably more experience than me, but I know that if you indefinitely postpone something for the rest of that legislative year, you can't bring it back. Uh, right. or you can't keep trying it different ways. Right. But I think if it's after an election, you're pretty much talking about just a couple months. So it, my opinion is regardless of what happens with the aldermanic legislation or how the petition is doing, we should create the committee anyway so that we have something to guide us and give us input. Right. That's what I said. Okay. Alderman Wilshire, then Ald then Alderman. Thank you. Thank you. You know, having weeks to work on this isn't really sufficient, in my opinion. I, I think many months, maybe a year. I mean, there's a lot of work. This, is, this commission's been around 130 years. To push it through in a couple of weeks or several weeks or whatever it is, is an injustice. Um, I am committing to you tonight that this committee will be formed. Um, I guess I, I didn't do it because I was hoping to work together with the administration, okay. not against, which is what it's going to feel like them and us, and, and it's unfortunate. We gave that opportunity, we asked to work with them and shut us down. So, you know, it's too bad that it has to become them and us because that's not what we want. Okay. You know, it, we're, it's just not right. Okay. But I, I commit to you that I will appoint a committee and that this work group will happen. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Klee. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, a couple things. Um, I'm glad to see the committee go forward. I, I think that's a, a great thing. And uh, I commit to being very open to whatever comments and so on come out of that committee. Um, I also would like to clarify something. And while I appreciate that it was the, the mayor who threw my um, name out there, I will say emphatically that the mayor did call me about a meeting that was happening, asked if I'd like to attend. Um, when I said, yeah, I think it would be a good idea, um, I was told that I was not allowed at that, at that meeting or that they would rather me not be there, something to that nature. I, I don't know the exact word. So um, again, that's the way it was. After the meeting, um, I was contacted by the mayor and asked, what was my opinion? And I said, well, why can't everything happen simultaneously? Why can't we be creating this group and that committee be, be done? And that I told him emphatically then, the same as I told the commissioner that I spoke to, I don't have the ability to stop that um, committee. I didn't start it, um, and et cetera. So I just want that to be out on the table. I love the idea of um, people talking. I like the idea of people um, committing to this. If I'm not mistaken, two things can go on the ballot as long as they're not exactly the same. So the same question can go on the ballot. Um, I don't know which one would take precedent um, as to how it goes on the ballot. Um, if, in other words, if both of them passed. So if there were competing ideas. Um, that I, I have not gotten clar clarification, but as long as they are different, they can go on the ballot together is what I've been told. Um, and I did not ask the question about, well, what if both pass? So um, I think that it becomes one of them has taken precedent. I don't know which, which one it is. Um, I don't know if it's approval process of whichever one comes first goes on the, on the ballot. Um, the signatures, they need the X number of signatures. Um, and each of those signatures, as I think was told to the mayor, um, will be looked at very carefully, as well it should. I, I think that that's a good, a good thing. So. Um, the fact that the citizens are going forward and doing this, I will not discourage them from doing it. I think it's something they need to do. But at the same time, I would encourage us to continue working and doing what we're doing. Um, it, it was brought up um, about that this has been going on for 130 years, and yes, it has. 
um, it was brought up. Um, do we know what the investigations that have been going on? I can say, yes, I do know. I do know about the mayor um, of recent past. I do know about the aldermen that have gone to jail, um, one of them being the president of the Board of Aldermen. Um, so I am aware of those things. Different I also, president, not I this one. No, not this one. No, no, please. No, I did not mean this one. Absolutely not. No. Salt of the earth, this one. Um, but so I, I am aware of all of those things. I am also aware that we don't know what's happening up in Concord. Um, I, I, you know, the, the idea that was brought up, which I, I think is a, a good idea and a good alternative, if this does not pass, um, why don't we start creating lists and send them to the governor? That's not a bad idea. Um, but again, I say, if this doesn't pass. Um, I still think we should go forward. I don't think it's a sad day, and I'm, and I'm sorry that my uh, fellow um, aldermen do feel that it's a sad day, that we are having this conversation. I don't think any conversation is a sad day. Um, someone had said about how much vetting was done. I think that, that we do a lot of vetting when we um, appoint people to boards and commissions. Um, I think it's, we're really saying something horrible about our personnel committee if we're saying we're not doing the vetting. So um, that would be a pockmark on, the, on this committee and I would never ever do, say that or ever do that. Um, again, the, the comment about no woman, no minorities and so on, um, while we would all love to see that change um, and hopes that it will change when you've got five members versus the three <clears throat> members, um, when it was brought up and I did have a hand in the development of this, it was not one single person. Um, I was contacted and said, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Um, I did not like the idea of, of forcing any particular group to be on this, and I made that very comment very clear, and it is not in the, in the wording of it. While I would like to see it, I did not want to put it in the wording. The only thing that I truly had um, um, very strong feelings were was the um, party affiliation, that it could not be from one of party affiliation. I do know there's a loophole because we have undeclared, so we could have five people undeclared, and they could technically be all of any one single party in, in theory. I did not want to see, um, again, any um, mandate put on um, any kind of group. I did want it to continue as it is now, that they must be Nashville residents. And if they move for whatever reason, they must resign. Um, to me, that was, that was a must. Again, it should be of um, Nashua um, citizens. I respect everybody here, and I respect everybody's passion. I do think that we, we need to tone down our um, rhetoric outside of here and inside of here. I think um, accusing members of this board of doing something that I'm not sure that you really know whether or not they have done um, hurts us all as a group. And um, that is the thing that makes me saddest. So I will leave it at that. Thank you. All Can I ask a point of order just so that I know where we are in the meeting? Do we have a, we? There's no motion on the floor. There's no motion. Just, okay. I thought, we just so took it I thought before table. we took it off the table with the motion to recommend, so. No, we took no. it off the table and then the all conversation right, so no from motion. dad was that we didn't need to make any motion and no motion has been made. Right. Sorry. No. <laughs> My clerk here. Okay, Sorry. Alderwoman um, Kelly. Thank you. Uh, my question, so I just wanted to say, um, I think that the committee has to have a good portion of um, participants from the greater um, citizenship of New Nashua. So I don't know how that looks, but if it's like the, the Nashua listens or the way they just did uh, city planning or ward meetings, however that mm -hmm. looks, I think that you know a, a committee can become insular very quickly. I think it's important that we have outside input um, and, and that and that that makeup is very important as well. So I'm, I'm offering to help in any way, shape, or form. The other question I had was procedurally: Is there any way that we could have a cutoff for something that is a city charter amendment so that we have enough time to vet these things? Because what I've heard multiple times is we don't really have enough time because then we'd have to change it. Then we'd have to have another, you know, public okay. hearing. Like, is there? a way for us to say, well, after January of an election year, we wouldn't look at a city charter amendment. We should do that. Don't do that. I will say that for the record. I was looking at the president saying, like, when she starts a new board, she should be like, 
do not do this after June. Like, because <laughs> we're, we're being told by legal, like all of these things could happen and they're being very conservative with making sure we have enough time. So I appreciate that, but it also puts us under the gun and makes us feel like we have to make snap right. decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's something to I mean, I'm not sure it has to be a legislative thing. Maybe, I just think that this has come up more than once where we feel very rushed because we would have to have another public hearing and blah, blah, blah. Like, it'd be great to know. Don't put anything like this on after May. Okay. Whatever it is. Alderwoman Lowe and then Alderman Lopez. Uh a comment and a question. Um, just, I wanted to share that alternative statements of a single amendment are prohibited. So you couldn't tweak it a little bit and have it on the ballot in two different versions. Um, you could, is that what could you Could not. Said? You could not. Yeah, in terms uh, regarding charter amendments, mm -hmm. it, they can't be similar but different. Um, and d does anyone know whether the state, uh, whether the state has approved this no. particular, no one knows or it has no, not? it hasn't been because they haven't looked at the petition. They haven't, we haven't voted on this particular piece of legislation. They only get, they only oh. get it after. After what? The public one has. It, if the petition, if. It has, okay. Well, I'm sorry, it has on the record, please. I, I, I apologize for interrupting. Um, <laughs> But this did go through those three bodies. Um, the citizens one did go through the three bodies, then came to the clerk's office <coughs> where she had to print out um, the forms. The people gathering the petitions can't even copy those forms. They had to come from um, our clerk's office. She prints them out and um, she alone gives them to whoever the lead people were um, in the petition. I don't know if there was three or 12. I keep hearing different as to how many people petitioned it, but. You Thank you, that's all. Okay. Go ahead, Alderman Dowd. <coughs> She's correct. I talked to the city clerk. It did go to Concord. It got the three holy water blessings from whoever asked to look at it. And, and it was sent back to the city clerk to print up the petitions and they need uh, over 1,539. Even the state takes it seriously. Validated. Mm -hmm. They just approve the the wording. Is that what you're saying? Right. They don't they have approve the, the wording. Petition. Okay. They don't have the petition. Okay. All right. My mistake. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Alderman Lopez. I just want to make a motion to refer it to the board without recommendation. Without recommendation. I'm not recommending it in its exact form. I literally want to oh, amend it. But I know you do. I want to make sure the board votes on it. Okay. All right. So Alderman Lopez mm -hmm. is making a motion to send R-21-143 to the full board of aldermen without recommendation from the personnel committee. Do we have any discussion on that from the committee? Alderwoman Kelly. So I don't love moving something out of committee without doing the work here, but I would like to ask multiple questions of Attorney Bolton and he's not here. I know that other people have looked things up, but I'd like to hear from Attorney Bolton whether or not we can make changes, et cetera. So I would support putting it to the board. Okay. Alderman, or getting him on Zoom, I don't know. <laughs> so. Okay, Alderman Cleaver, do you have anything concerning the um, motion? I agree we should. Send it to the full board for for discussion without recommendation. Okay. Okay. I'm just fine with that. Uh, Ald Alderwoman Lou. Yes, thank you. Uh, just wondering if I could ask why you would choose not to vote and see whether there would be a, uh, I see. Committees don't have to make a recommendation for final approval. Sure. They can send it without a recommendation so that sure. they can get more input. As you said, um, there are aldermen that have a lot of comments and whatever we do at the committee, we've, you know, we've had two of these. So to bring it to the full board without recommendation is, is perfectly. No, I understand. I just wondered why I, I thought you could send it uh, 
with uh, uh, recommending against. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Took two cents. Why? Alderman? <laughs> <laughs> you have, how many members do you have voting tonight? Four. Four. If it's two, two, it loses. That's true. Well, can't the board president weigh in? No. No? She no, because we have a quorum. We have a quorum. We, we already have a quorum. Okay. So with that, uh, will the do I have to repeat the motion? No. Okay. Will the clerk call the roll? Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly is a yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Okay. Four yays. Passes. It will go to the full board next week. Right. Next week. Okay. Next thing off the top. Oh, just, oh aren't there anything else? Yeah. Sorry. Purgatory one. Purgatory. <laughs> okay, I move to take from the table R21152, proposing an amendment to the city charter relative to adding two additional members to the Board of Health. Okay, would the please, uh, clerk please call the roll? Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly is a yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. That is before us. Okay, so. Um, Alderman Lopez agreed to um, table this piece of legislation so that we could have some conversation uh, with members of the Board of Health. And um, Chairman Tony Storis is here. So um, if the committee has no problem with that, um, we'd like to have him come up and have a conversation. Do we have a problem? No. <laughs> okay, thank you. If you'd like to sit, okay. Chairman. Any of those, that's how you do. Thank you for coming. And I also think um, Director Bagley's on the line. Um, Dr. Kali Capetta. Yeah. Yeah. Heidi Peak. Okay, is. And we have Dr. Ralph Wolf, Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Yeah, uh, Dr. Wolf, if you want to join us too, you may. Thank you. Okay. So this piece of legislation was uh, brought forward to add two members uh, to the existing Board of Health, so which would bring your members up to five. Um, and Alderman Lopez was the uh, sponsor of this particular legislation. So uh, would you like to um, give them your reasons? And then I know that Chairman Storis had some ideas and recommendations. Yep, so my original idea was to increase to five instead of three um, because uh, this allows for a larger uh, quorum pool to pull from in the event that somebody is sick or has to reschedule or isn't able to attend. Um, with a three-person board, you run into the issue too that if a single member has to duck out, step out, or um, leave, then you're left with a tie. So you can't make decisions unless there's full agreement. Um, additionally, because of it's only a three-person dynamic, there's you're going to lose every vote if you don't agree with the other two. So um, in terms of decision-making bodies, most boards have a minimum of five. It's more recommended um, just because if there's a reason somebody can't attend or participate, uh, it provides you backup people. And then additionally for that, if you have a momentous decision to make where there isn't full agreement, people don't feel pressured to identify themselves as the dissenting vote. Um, I also, in working with the legal department, um, found that it was specific to physicians on the Board of Health. Um, I had found other boards of health um, in other areas of, this, of the country that had um, different types of representation on them. So um, I added mental health counseling or um, psychology uh, as a representation. Um, so it, it specifically says somebody with a doctorate level in the field of psychiatry um, or a doctor, could be one of the additional appointees. Um, and then also master's level um, public health experience so that that discipline could be represented. 
by a volunteer or a citizen on the, the commission rather than only by our city staff. So um, my thinking was updating the uh, qualifications and the, the disciplines because the last time anybody even touched the Board of Health was like over 100 years ago. Um, and admittedly, psychology wasn't quite as far along as it is now. Um, so it's much more relevant in my mind to a lot of the different um, struggles that we have, whether it's opioid crisis, whether it's, or substance misuse uh, crisis, uh, whether it's an outbreak of suicides, um, or any other number of behavioral issues, having somebody with that particular background as an option for the board would also be a benefit. Okay, thank you. So, um, Chairman Soros and I had a conversation, and um, so he has met with the board and had some discussion, and I'd like you to make your presentation, because sure. I know um, Alderman Lopez is always open to. Okay, yeah. First, thank you very much for having us. Is that too loud for everybody? No. Okay. All right, well, I'm not as good a public speaker is Alderman O'Brien, and, <laughs> and I'm not even close to being as funny as you, but um, I'll try to do my best to uh, articulate. Uh, thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, I would like to go on record to say that the Board of Health members emphatically oppose the resolution before you. I'd like to outline <clears throat> uh, some of the things that the board does, but I think I'm just going to go straight to what uh, Alderman Karen and I had talked about earlier, um, and that is um, one of the things, um, the board itself works really, really well together. And adding two more members does not guarantee that that's gonna happen. And one of the things that we are really good at is being cohesive. Um, that doesn't mean we agree in everything we say uh, or everything we think but we hammer it out, we work it out, and, and that's been um, a really good benefit. I've sat on many boards, sat on, I still sit on some that are very large, and it's hard to get a consensus, a lot of infighting, things like that. We can't have that on this board. We can't have it because we have to make decisions, and sometimes, as you saw with the pandemic, very quick decisions. Okay. Um, and I think we've done a really good job. Everybody tries um, hard. Uh, the, uh, you have to remember you have volunteers here. You don't have really people who are on the payroll <clears throat> that can sustain their family with a stipend, something like that. So th they have another master, and that might be the hospital, that might be their group. So if we schedule a, uh, a meeting that's an hour and a half, um, it's hard sometimes, you know, things get in the way, and they get called away, the emergencies. Remember, they're doctors, and their first call is to their patients, first and foremost. Okay. So sometimes uh, we can run out of time. Uh, that happens. Uh, we don't have the luxury of, I hate to say it, but you guys stay up really late. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I applaud you for that. I mean, it's, you know, I, I, I certainly couldn't do it. So we can do other things to work around that. But anyway, um, I would like to submit an easy and reasonable solution to this issue by using a specialist consultant. Okay. The Board of Health currently uses Dr. Alex Gronick, our infectious disease specialist, who was invaluable during the COVID part one. One of my concerns, if we start adding to the board, where do we stop? May I remind everyone that there are 30 specialists in medicine and more uh, subspecialists, uh, and that's just medicine alone. I would also like to refresh everyone's memory, and Tom mentioned it, that uh, we do have a public health person, um, happens to be an employee of the city, but she's very eminent, she's really qualified, she's a master in nursing, a master in public health, um, and we may at some point, if she ever retires, I told her she can't, uh, but if she does, we will have to deal with uh, having a, ma a master of public health or a doctor of public health on the board. I would encourage the committee to look at using the specialist. Specialists can sit in on all the meetings as the public. 
so there's no change there whatsoever. And the difference would be that the specialists wouldn't um, be able to vote on things. And that's really the only, the only thing. Uh, even during the pandemic, uh, I can tell you, uh, I'm retired and I spend lots of hours through the night reading articles, professional journals, taking a course in virology and infectious diseases so that I was up to speed on things. <laughs> I couldn't have done that if I had my practice. I would have had to walk away from the board. These people work extremely hard and they work well together. And being on all the committees that I'm on, I don't ever see that kind of cooperation. Hey, we're professionals. That means we've got big egos, but we leave them at the door. And the same thing with politics. And kind of chuckling in the back when June said about people sitting on committees. Yeah, nobody else wanted it, so the guy's been there 4,000 years. I've been here 25 years. It went fast. But I will tell you, the first thing I said when I came on the board, the Dolly Bellavance brought me on, and it was, we can't have politics. I, and maybe I was clairvoyant way back then, but we all know what's happened to the CDC, NIH, WHO, state and local boards that injected politics into making good medical decisions. It's chaos. We don't have that here. There's no politics. We don't need the politics. And we've got people who are super dedicated. And I can tell you, I'm very proud to have them as colleagues. Um, not sure if I can. Yes, the yep. okay. Any other member of uh, your board would like to speak? Dr. Capetta is uh, on Zoom and then I will okay. Dr. Sure Capetta. Is he still awake? Yes. yes. Yeah, he's oh, hello, right thank up. you. Um, <laughs> um, as a pediatrician, I don't stay up late, so this is beyond my, <laughs> my bedtime. I'm sorry. But, um, no, this is good. Oh, thank you to the members, all the woman chair and the members of the committee for hearing us tonight, but I echo Dr. Storis says, and I know Dr. Stephanie Wolf Rosenblum's comments tonight will be similar, but you know, we're all practicing physicians, number one, and, and healthcare providers. Um, we all have busy practices and I am still in practice. I'm a full-time pediatrician. I have been for 31 years. Um, I work in Nashville live, and live in the community all day long with other things I do. I love public health and that's why I'm involved in this. Um, we have a great leader with Dr. Storis and Dr. Ba uh, sorry, uh, Bobby Bagley, our, our director. She's phenomenal, as is her crew of phenomenal behind the scenes worker bees. And we're perhaps the face of the Board of Health, but all the work done is behind, behind, behind us and because of them. And so for me, not only do I disagree completely with the addition of uh, two, two more members, but support 100% the idea of a specialist ad hoc person coming in, be it, like you said, um, an infectious disease, or I'm going to use an example of Gail Gettens, and the, it was from the lead, lead, uh, New Hampshire lead program. Um, she's an expert in lead. We've had a lot of issues around lead in the public health field for the last few years. And why we could use her as an example, if we had a lead issue, have her come in, spend three or four meetings with us to help direct where we need to go. And then she leaves. She like we just heard may not have a vote, but um, it's situational support. It doesn't mean to need to be a body, just to have a warm body. Um, because our role is advocate, educate, and protect. That's all we do. That's where we're coming from. We don't have egos, like Tony just said. We're, we're apolitical. Um, this is based on protecting our, our families and patients. It's educating about what we, how we can keep them healthy each and every day. And, um, and advocate for their rights. So um, for me, the frustration has come as similar to perhaps the police commission discussion tonight. This came completely out of the blue. Um, that I had, we as a board and me personally never heard about this until an ad hoc email came out that we'd like to talk about addition and talking about process, we threw it out the window. There was no process here. Um, it never had the, the right or the, the, I guess the respect I'll use sadly to come to us and say, let's have it on our agenda sometime. Never met that, met the light of day. It was perhaps in one recall earlier this month or early in the spring, as, as a, someone brought up in the public health section of our committee, 
said, let's talk about adding members. And so that was the last I heard of it or the first I've heard of it. The next I know it's gone to a committee and now it's come tonight. So I don't feel like we were given the respect um, that we needed. Maybe we don't deserve it, but I feel we, we work well together. I feel what all we do is, is volunteer work to help the citizens. Um, but I would, I would strongly disagree with this. We work well together. Adding more warm bodies for the sake of bodies is not something I support. Thank you, Dr. Rosamu. Thank you, Madam Chair. Being, so being able to serve on the Board of Health for the last several years has been a huge privilege, especially in light of the pandemic. And to me, it's brought to the fore just how critical a role this board plays. Also, I would like to uh, be in respectful of the enormous amount of time you all spend uh, and the passion that you all bring, that uh, Alderman Lopez brings to these conversations. So in a fashion parallel to some of the discussion I heard prior to the Board of Health um, ordinance or uh, recommendation, I would like to see conversations and enhanced communication between the Board of Health and the Board of Aldermen about the kinds of things that we could do to support our public health department, um, to ensure that the Board of Aldermen uh, have uh, situational awareness um, about the current events uh, that command our attention. Uh, today it's the pandemic uh, because it's, you know, uh, so serious and uh, impacting, you know, every aspect of our lives. Uh, tomorrow our focus may be mental health. And as Dr. Capetta pointed out, it may be lead poisoning, as has happened in other parts of the country uh, when the water supply was contaminated. So I would like to uh, see us find a way for formal communication on a regular basis to occur between the Board of Health and the Board of Aldermen around these issues in a proactive fashion. And then based on those conversations and identify needs, if any amendments or changes um, or enhancements need to be made to the Board of Health, it would be not just a matter of adding additional persons, but of enhancing functionality. And so I would echo what Dr. Storis and Dr. Capetta said, but I also want to um, see process going forward enhance our ability to serve uh, the citizens and to serve you in your roles uh, in the community. Okay. Thank you. Um, any questions from the committee first? Alderman Lopez. Uh, just some comments. Um, so I want to apologize to the Board of Health about communication issues, uh, but I think maybe explaining the time frames involved might also be helpful. Um, so the after bringing it up in the meeting and keeping in mind that this was in the context of these were the meetings where we were discussing primarily the mask ordinance mandates. So there was not a lot of extra time to bring extraneous items in. Um, I went to the legal department to try to evaluate how the ordinance would look, expanding the membership, all that kind of stuff with the intent to bring it back to the board to look at. Legal brought that up or uh, brought me the, um, the final copy after the last meeting before the board adjourned for July. And I did talk to Director Bagley and express concerns that it was now the time frame, the timing was gonna be awkward. So the board was gonna be in recess. So after the objections from the chair at the public comment, um, I thought I would be able to just table it until the next meeting until first that meeting wasn't reconvened. It was in my calendar for some reason. So I assumed that some issue had come up or they had decided to convene for this specifically. During the adjournment process, when you had decided to leave, to take the month off, 
you had been focusing mostly on the need for public health to move and relocate their offices. We also said if a issue arises that needs to be discussed, you would be available to meet for Zoom. So I saw a Zoom meeting on my calendar. I invited the national public to it, uh, and then the meeting just dis disappeared and wasn't on the, the city calendar. So can't explain that. But um, because of the timing, the legal department released it after released the actual legislation to be looked at after the last meeting that we were all attending. And because of the time frame that the state imposes on being able to have public comment, being able to have discussion, and then being able to propose it to the full board for whatever form it's finally going to be in, we wouldn't even have been able to wait until the meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow. So I appreciate that you met and you did have the, the conversation. Um, and I do think that the communication has been very, very poor. Um, and I take responsibility for my side of that. But um, I agree that this is what it should look like when the Board of Health makes a recommendation. Regardless of whether the aldermen are going to follow it, at least we should be inviting them to the table, literally, and having them present um, as part of the committee members. Um, I did not like the way that the communication worked out with regards to the masking ordinance or the curfew particularly, because I felt like we were forcing the committee to speak in public comment and under limited um, conversation. So regardless of how the specific uh, proposal that I made uh, goes, I do think we can move forward with the idea that if we're going to ask the opinion of the public health um, board, then we should be including them in the actual conversation piece. Um, with regards to some of the comments that were made or concerns that were raised, um, I don't think a specialist would meet the issues of quorum. Um, unless we put that in as a different referendum item. Um, you could empower them, I think, to vote as chair. And I think um, either Alderwoman Karen or um, Lori can correct me on that, but I think the chair has the ability to appoint somebody voting authority. But I'm not certain that appointing a specialist will resolve the issues that I'm looking at. And the issues are not specific to this board or this incarnation of it. It's that we're in a situation where we have a board that's overseeing the public health practices for an like an a city increasing in size. And the model that was designed decades ago should be more resilient now. So I understand that every all three members are physicians and that you do have a duty to serve your patients. And as an alternative to creating a dilemma between those two, I think it just makes more sense to add two more members because somebody can step out if they have to. Two somebody's could step out if they have to. The quorum is met and the meetings can continue as long as you have three or more people. So you have extra people. Um, by using a multidisciplinary approach, you're not necessarily going to get the exact same crisis hitting all of the members at once. So if it's specifically a medical issue like COVID-19, we need more doctors, we need people to treat patients you're not necessarily going to see someone with a master's in public health have to leave the meeting early. They may specifically have more time to dedicate because it's an issue. Likewise, with someone with a psychiatric background rather than pure um, medical practice. So that was my thinking. And I'm not sure that the specialist um, suggestion meets it. Um, this, I believe, is the only shot we get at making amendments if it goes back to the full board given the time frame. I'd also point out that it's not necessarily guaranteed to pass at the in, in public, because when it's a referendum, it means every voter who's voting also gets to check a box off. So I can't predict that it's going to pass, even if it did pass in my intended form, that the people of Nashua would actually adopt it. So I just want to clarify that part of the process. Dr. Storrs. Uh, I understand what you're saying, Tom. But also, that's kind of half of the story. The other half of the story is you're going to have to send this up to Concord. Why would we want Concord to be meddling in our business? I just heard you guys talking about that for, regarding the police. Because not only they are, can approve what you send up, they can also change it or add to it or do tinker with it in any way. Oh, yes, they can. Because I talked to Lee. This is a referendum oversight process. We're talking about we're talking about like we're talking about opening up the city charter. I know we've been discussing the process at length. 
Yeah. So why, why would we want to do that? Why would we want to invite somebody to be doing that? When we talk about a, a specialist, um, we're talking about a person who has a special interest in health, and they would be our go-to person, just like I used the example of Dr. Gronk. Uh, he sits with the board and can talk, but he doesn't vote. He can give us our, what all, whatever opinions that we ask him for. Um, and again, he, he doesn't vote. The idea of what we really want to do is we want to keep the board nimble. We want them to be able to react quickly and be able to um, communicate um, and do our things. We have not had a problem with uh, people missing. We've always had a quorum. And because we see things in the same light, because we work together and we know what we know from experience and from sitting on the board for so many years, um, if there's two people there, they can vote. If I'm not there, like the time that I wasn't, because I was in the emergency room with my mother, holding her hand and talking to Chuck, who was running the meeting on the other hand. Okay, so we, we're, we're fine with that. The problem with more wheels that are put into the system, I'm afraid you're, you're gonna lose that cohesiveness. You're gonna lose that ability to trust each other. Th these are things that are intangibles. You can't go out and buy them. You know, we might be lucky and get two people that are home run hitters. You know, every manager's dream. But I don't feel that I'd wanna take the risk of upsetting that delicate balance that we have. Not only do we work amongst ourselves, we, as Dr. Capetta said, we work with the division. And I feel if I can go ask them a question at any time in any place, I'm gonna get the answer or I'm gonna get the answers as quickly as possible because we trust each other. We, we know what's going on. And many times they already anticipate the questions that we're gonna ask. And, and that comes from working together. It's, it's what it is. Um, another sports metaphor. You know, you, you mess up the line, two, three guys on the line, and who's at risk? The quarterback. Because they know the cadence, they know how to, to play. I don't see us having a problem. I have not seen anybody complain about this as a problem. I do think it's really important, especially in the light of COVID, with a lot of the psychological problems that are happening in our community, that it would be just right for a nice position for somebody to be able to, to give to the board their professional opinion. But I'm not so sure that I would want anybody at this point in time voting. Uh, if I can just respond. Yes. Um, to Lopez. clarify the way that it's written, the board appointment process is the same, meaning the aldermanic president is the one who appoints members who are nominated. Mm -hmm. That nomination process, you would be welcome to nominate or appoint anybody. By changing the definitions of the extra two, my intention was to leave the existing board exactly the same as it is, um, but give you more flexibility for who you could find for the additional um, spaces. And again, that's more just to focus on the board in its objective form, not its current form, What's it gonna look like in future years? I'm assuming all of you are not gonna be on the board in 20 years. Not, not 25 more years from now, I can okay, guarantee well, that. Um, <laughs> and so that's more what I'm looking at mm -hmm. is we need to preserve the ability of the board to meet regularly and make decisions for an increasingly large city that represents that increasingly large city. Have, uh, my, my question back to you is a question. Have we not done that? You have, and that's why it's something that needs to be protected. We don't know who's gonna be on the board in the future. Right. We don't know what that's gonna look like, but making sure that we have a large enough board that it can continue meeting regardless of the commitments of the future members mm -hmm. is just prudent in my mind. Uh, I, sorry. Yes, Dr. Storhas. I, I totally agree with you, but I can't look into the crystal ball and see what the future is. But I'll bring it back to another metaphor, cooking with my grandmother, okay? She knew instinctively what to put in the stew, whatever she's making. Most of the times it was meatballs, but she just knew. So when I, when I said, Grandma, I want, and Nani, I want, I want the recipe. They never tasted like her meatballs. Why? Because she knew it needed need a little bit of this or a little bit of that. When we have our three people, <clears throat> we know each other. 
You could add more people to that. And yes, we will have the core, but we have new people now. And it just changes it. I, you know, unless you've been on a sports team, I, that's my only thing that I can relate to you, how everybody works in unison. But I also recognize what you're saying, and I, and, I, and I don't belittle it at all. We don't know what the future holds. And I think what we have to be is nimble and recognize when that changes, or if we need those changes, that we can come back to the board and say, hey, guess what, guys? This is what, you know, we need to do this, this, and this. And who knows what that's gonna be, but I, but I hope that I'm cognitive enough that Alzheimer's hasn't kicked in more than it already has, that we would recognize that and come to the board and I would have a board of aldermen and alder people, excuse me. I'm not even sure that's correct either, but, <laughs> but anyway, um, that, would, that would recognize what we're saying and be very helpful to get to that, to that goal. What I, what I propose is look, we're not in a hurry in doing this. We are, in a, we are in a crisis in a way. You notice in my thing, I talked about the pandemic COVID part one. We're now starting to see part two, right? And I'd like to keep this, this group together because we know how to do our things, especially Stephanie, because she feeds me all the good information. <laughs> and I'd say, let's try it for a year. Tom, if you have a recommendation of somebody you would like to put into that specialty person role uh, regarding psychology, okay, because that's outside of my, my knowledge base. Be more than happy to vet that person and put them in there. They just wouldn't be a voting member, but they can come to every meeting and certainly be asked questions and be able to be on the, the agenda. And then let's see how it goes from there. I appreciate the invitation. It's not about who I would try to put in. Mm -hmm. um, I have already worked with the mayor to try to form specifically a, a mental health um, committee, which he formed, and uh, now it's in, in their hands. And mm -hmm. when I was looking at potential people who I would be able to recommend if, I, if we, this did pass, I couldn't find an actual psychiatrist. I, the people who were most willing to step forward for the for a potential board of public health role, we're public health professionals. So you don't have a shortage of people there. Um, anybody who is proposed would be proposed to the president. Mm -hmm. They would be interviewed here, and I would imagine you would have input in that process. But none of that will happen until after the election, because if this passes tonight and goes to the full board, and then if it goes to the full board and passes, that's where Concord looks at it and makes sure that we didn't accidentally illegally change our charter. Mm -hmm. um, and then it is put on the ballot and then people still actually have to vote for it. So that's where my concern comes in about waiting until the problem presents itself directly is if there's a situation where you do need to expand the Board of Health because you're having trouble meeting or having quorum, it's gonna take at minimum a year because you have to wait for it, you have to get it through the aldermanic process and then it has to go onto a ballot election in order to change. So you can't change the city's charter, you can't expand, contract, or alter anything on the Board of Health without going through the referendum item. And that's why by adding two people after 100 years, I don't think we're opening the floodgates. You're not gonna get inundated with more people. It's still capping at five. And if you don't have up to five, you have three right now say in January or February, it's not like the board can't convene, you actually have to have appointees to fill the spot first. So until you have those people figured out and assigned, nothing changes, but it does allow you the opportunity to A, recruit for the future. If you know someone who's promising that you particularly wanna see pass on, I, we all do it, I hope. Um, when as, as, as politicians at least, we identify people in our wards who might have potential um, gifts to offer and we might refer them to different committees that are specific or we might make sure that they're following the process and all that kind of stuff so they don't start cold. So you could use the two extra spaces if they were ever created in the first place to groom future Board of Health commissioners. Yeah, Stephanie. Stephanie. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to uh, address two uh, comments that have been made and expand on those. 
One has to do with the concept of subject matter, matter experts versus persons that can serve in a commission capacity. One of the things about the three members of the Board of Health at this time is that all of us have leadership experience. Uh, Dr. Capetta has been very active in the community in many, many aspects in the, in the school system, uh, at his facility. Myself, I have a master's uh, from uh, the uh, Heinz School of Public Policy and Management and served many years as the chief medical officer at the hospital. I know Dr. Storis also has leadership. So one of the things that we've been called on to do at the Board of Health is not just to examine the science and not just to make recommendations based on the science, but also to listen to the community and the needs to balance the needs of the community. Uh, and that particularly came up when it was relative to the mass mandate. So it's not just a matter of having someone that has you know, a master's degree or a doctorate but that they have some leadership experience and will understand how to build consensus. So if we're going to think about the future of what the Board of Health needs, mm -hmm. I wanna make sure it's not just about adding different expertise. And that's why the idea of having specialists comes in is so appealing because you can have their expertise without necessarily having someone that would be able to be part of this leadership process. The other thing that's been mentioned on a number of occasions this evening and prior to this evening has to do with the amount of time that members of the Board of Health are able to commit. And notwithstanding that we took on these positions with the understanding that it would be a meeting a month and the meeting would generally be about an hour and a half, I think the commitment that the Board of Health members have shown during the last 18 months of the COVID, where we've, uh, on a number of occasions, because we had insufficient time during a single meeting, have met twice a month, uh, you know, or, you know, ad hoc when things were, uh, were necessary. So I don't think it's a matter of able, ability to commit time our energy, um, I just think that we have just had so many issues to deal with that the allocation in a single board meeting has to be parsed out. And, and so I, I, I don't feel like that should be an acute driver of a permanent change in the structure of the committee because especially since we have limited amounts of time, adding additional persons would you know, have the potential to extend conversations as you are trying to get people up to speed on a number of the different aspects of it. And I, I just, I, I really fear that it's gonna complicate things that is at, at a time where we need to be nimble as uh, Dr. Storrs said. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Capetto had yeah, his hand. Yeah, he was getting glassy eyes, so I wanted you to. He was, okay. <laughs> you can't do that. You haven't been here an hour. I just know him, that's all. Oh, no, thank you. Um, no, I think uh, my colleagues have eloquently just stated what I was going to say too, that I think that the last 18 months we've had to, uh, you know, this, the, the term situational awareness and flexibility comes to mind as I'm listening to everyone. And Alderman Lopez, you've been phenomenal. I loved your, your, uh, your input since you arrived. I've been on seven years. We didn't have one come, come as regularly as you do. And it's fun to see and hear and and respect all that you're doing. So all of this is not representative of anything other than, like as I said before, we don't have egos. We're here to help and support you guys. If it comes to a vote that you guys will do, it's, it's out of our control. But, you know, I think the COVID brought to light how well this group works. You know, we went from zero to 60 really, really fast. And thanks to the leadership of Director Bagley and her wonderful team, Stephanie, um, Tony and I, you know, met and met and met and you guys were there and part of it and some meetings were frustrating i agree some meetings we didn't feel like we accomplished anything but it was no different than everyone else in the rest of the world to try to figure out how to best do this and so i think our pliability flexibility um has has come to light and i say that just as a uh, 
you know, threesome, it's a lot easier to do than a, in, with five and five on board and trying to negotiate schedules, um, trying to figure out, um, you know, when and when, when he or she could meet these kind of things. But in my seven years, there's never been a tie. It's been mentioned that, you know, we've never been able to vote on things. Well, two is a form for us or a quorum. So, you know, I think, and I've sat on many meetings, I've run national meetings. I was president of the pediatric society here in six, for six years, you know, with 285 pediatricians. So um, that number about how many you need in a board, you know, is probably, I mean, I agree that it's maybe um, in the future, we might have to transition and any good leader always looks to the people below us to come behind us and take over. But to use that as an opportunity for a reason for doing it now, I still am questioning the urgency. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other committee members? Alderman Cleaver, did you have your hand up? Not a member. No, I guess not. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You're all set? All set. Thank you. Alderman Clee. Uh, thank you very much, um, Madam Chair. Um, for complete transparency, I did have a conversation with uh, one of the board members and um, it was quite enlightening and I appreciated the the time. Um, I, I, I love the idea uh, that Dr. Stephanie brought forward about um, the process, um, having to define whether or not in case of emergency, you need to meet more often as you did. Um, and I do wanna say that I have been at the Board of Health meetings where um, somebody was calling in from a, another location far, far away. Um, and as you, as you said yourself, um, um, you taking care of your mother with one hand and on the phone with the other, you all should be commended. Um, my, my only concern was the concern of, of quorum. All you have to do is have two people for some reason couldn't. And during this time, you guys were um, extraordinary in your meetings, but I know you were also pulled in the direction of healthcare. Um, and I'd been at meetings where one of you had to leave because you had appointments because your patients do come first. So that was kind of my, um, my first concern. <coughs> the other one is the right to know issue where there's only three of you, you cannot have a conversation even to ask a simple question as to how do you feel about this without violating right to know. So that means all questions um, have to happen within and, and I know that you're doing that and I, I, I so appreciate appreciate that, but I think in some respects it, it kind of puts you, we have a, a board here of 15. Um, if I were to talk to more than um, eight people, I violated right to know. That means that I can talk to two or three people to kind of get some feeling of it. Um, I can tell you I've come to a board meeting where I haven't talked to my colleagues with one set of ideas, know that this is how I'm gonna vote, um, the budget was one of them um, and got there and actually heard from my colleagues and thought, okay, no, I can't go that way. They, they've, they've convinced me otherwise. I would have loved to have been able to talk to them, but because of right to know, hands are tied and we, we, we can't have those conversations. So it has to happen live in person in front of everybody um, and it makes it a little bit difficult. So that was just my, my question about whether or not you, f you feel any kind of handicap by that. You might not, you might just want to, um, do that. And just uh, one more um, comment. I think the consultant idea, you made a point that there's 30 different specialties. We could not put 30 people on the board to, to hit all those specialties. I mean, that, that's almost as bad as what we're doing up in Concord with 400 people. So I would never go that way. And I do understand that, that more creates chaos. Um, I personally thought that five was a good number. They would not all come on board because I think as I, as I spoke to one of the board members, um, to have two brand new people come on, two fledglings, no matter what their experience is, they're not experienced with that board, that could set you off. So I, I would like to see it kind of be staggered. You get one for a year or so and, and then so on, if this were to pass. I know that would mean changing everything, so um, I'm just gonna kind of put that out there um, and so on. But I do also like the idea of a, um, a slot on our agenda, um, quarterly, semi-annually, whatever, where you give us an update or in the matter of crisis like we were having with that and you're not part of the public speaking for three minutes. Um, I think that was just a misunderstanding. I, I think you should have been coming up forward and probably just didn't know that you might have that opportunity because we've had some of the subject matter experts speak beyond the three minutes. So 
Um, and thank you so much for just letting me have my say. Dr. Storrs. Just one thing. Yeah. We, <clears throat> we're very industrious. And you're right, I couldn't talk to Chuck or I couldn't talk to Stephanie. So we go back to the old Jewish having the, the uh, go-between. So Bobby is our go-between. So I can call it Bobby, and I say, Bobby, I got this, this, or usually it's Texer. I got this, this, and this. Can you throw that out? Mm -hmm. And I'll talk. And if anybody needs to talk, they'll talk to her, and then she will come back to me. And so that's that's really how we do it, and try not to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I can tell you there are certain crises that do occur, and we just have to do what we have to do. And this pandemic is part one, was one of them. Mm -hmm. And when everything's done and we're sweeping up the ashes, if somebody's upset that I had to call Stephanie up because I needed some piece of information, she's like, I can tell you, she's just a research rat. She can find things and I wouldn't even know how to do it because uh, I'm pretty much computer illiterate. But, but anyway, um, I would do that. I would, in, in the grand scheme of things, if the health of the, of the citizens were there and I needed a piece of something that I needed information, I'm gonna call her or text her. And, and that's all there is to that. Um, but I can tell you, um, I just really like this. I have a love for this group. They really work well together. Um, sometimes it's crazy. They're worth answering each other's questions in our minds before the person's even asking them. And, and that's unique, it's really, especially amongst doctors, because I've sat enough committees for doctors. Egos are like out the roof, you know, and, and this group doesn't have them. It's just not there. Madam Chair, may I yes. ask a question? Yes, Alderman Clay. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate that. I, I think you all do work together. I watched, um, you were amazing. Each of you had a separate role. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were you you brought your unique perspective in, and I do agree that Dr. Stephanie is a, a plethora of knowledge of of facts, and and I appreciate it. Um, she's also one of my constituents for full transparency, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so grateful to have her in my ward. But um, putting that putting that aside, um, just a hypothetical and putting it out there. But if you didn't quite work as cohesive, um, if there was a uh, chink in that armor, um, might you feel different to the five? Yes and no. Okay. If we weren't working cohesively together, <clears throat> my job as the chair would be to find out why. You know, maybe somebody close to me didn't leave their ego at the door. Okay, you know, um, I try to keep a low profile. Uh, they don't even know the committees that I sat on nationally or in it. In, um, regionally and the awards and all the rest of that stuff because it isn't important. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't make me smarter. It certainly doesn't make me more powerful. That isn't the case. But if we have a situation where we're not working well together, my job is to figure out why. And if, and if it isn't, and if it's me, I would expect them to come to me and say, hey, you've fallen off your horse. you got to get back up. Um, or you're not, you know, you're in, your head's not in the game. You're standing there at bat, but you're not looking at the ball. You, you're just dropping things. It's, you know, you're giving us all a bad name. That would not make, you know, if you've got something that's broken and you add two more pieces to it, does that fix it? No, more than likely, if you haven't taken care of the underlying problem and managed it correctly, it could get actually worse. And I would never do that because I, I really have a love <clears throat> like Chuck does for public health. And I love my city. I don't want Channel 5 News sitting outside of Mulberry Street saying, you know, these guys blotch something up. So, so I would never do that. Thank you. Those are great answers. You know they're going to do that anyway, though. What's that? <laughs> they're going to do that anyway. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Alderman Wellishire and then Alderman Lowe. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the work that you do, all of you, the, the board and the public health department. Um, you're kind of the silent partners though. You know, nobody hears anything really that you do until you have a pandemic and then they realize the value. But isn't that good though? <laughs> <laughs> that you don't know. We, we try, and Bobby's trying to get us more into the public eye and, and we've got some great communication people and stuff, but um, you're right. Until a crisis occurs, 
Everybody knows what you nobody do knows, or why and, you're there. And, and nobody cares. Pretty much. Being static. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Anna. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so I appreciate you coming out and, you know, making your voices heard on this issue. Um, you guys have been phenomenal during this pandemic. I don't know what we would have done without you. Um, yeah, I, I, this is a tough one. I, I'm not I'm not 100% sold on this, so mm -hmm. um, thank you for all you do, and I, I it is appreciated. I And I think the city more realizes now what you do. I mean, it takes something this disastrous mm -hmm. to bring out the best, in, and thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Thank you. It's our pleasure. All the women, Lou. Thank you. I just wanted to say, um, since I came on the board, I've been to a lot of the Board of Health meetings, and I've been really impressed with how much is covered and how well it's covered and uh, just the way uh, those meetings run. I, I um, do understand the benefit of having a smaller body over a larger. I mean, I, that does, you know, uh, resonate with me. I can see how if possible, or when it is uh, three, um, you know, it, there are benefits. It, and that's, um, that's what I wanted to hear, is whether, um, you know, they needed more help or, or that would become unwieldy. And I think every one of them has described a five member as being more, possibly more unwieldy, you know, I don't, see that we need it, um, but I just want to say I've really enjoyed, you know, I think you do a great job. Thank you. Thank you, we appreciate you. Yeah. And we'll be happy to come and talk to the board anytime you want us to. Of course. Okay, so I was going to um, say the same thing as Alderman Wilshire. I know we had a board of health, but we never heard from you until this pandemic came and you had to come see us. And I agree that maybe coming twice a year to the full board and giving a report with uh, Director Bagley is not a bad thing because then people know what's happening, especially like, you know, the lead problem or if there's uh, an issue here or there. So, and I will say that um, Dr. Sturris, once he gets on a board, is very committed because I sat with him for long time on uh, well, what is now the Citizens Advisory Commission. He was our numbers guy, but you know, so I think you're all dedicated. So I, like Alderman Wilshire, am not sure doing this is the right thing to do. And also, I think we didn't have enough discussion on it. Um, and like I told Alderman Lopez, if we could get you here and get your feedback and then uh, mm -hmm. because he's he, alderman lopez has been very um involved with public health uh, since he's been on the board and i respect him for that because that's a, a, a challenge it can be a challenge so um my head is spinning too but i think since we took this off the table i think as a committee we should um, make a motion to do whatever to bring it to the full board for next week so it can be voted on one way or the other. So, um, Alderman Lopez. Just to make a comment, um, so the Board of Health does not just put out fires. Um, if you're wondering how many people are applying for welfare assistance because they're homeless or uh, needing rent assistance, how many families are unsheltered, that's where you go. That's the information they cover every month. So it is something that aldermen shouldn't necessarily expect a report given to them so much as you should check in on them every now and then and see what they're handling. Um, and that's why I'm usually so involved in the um, Board of Health. It wasn't just because of the, the COVID-19 epidemic. I appreciate the effort that you guys put in with the masking ordinance and with the, uh, the curfew, regardless of how it was uh, received. But... Um, there's a lot of day-to-day -day activity that goes on, and there are, are public health issues that are not, um, they may not affect the entire city, but they acutely affect the population that they affect. Um, and there's other programs too, like the sauna awareness, uh, the needle exchange, um, pre preventative efforts uh, to try to keep um, children who've had adverse childhood experiences or um, children who uh, are, 
in families where substance abuse has had a major impact, making sure that they're they're able to have positive life experiences, they're able to get supports that they need so that the cycle doesn't continue. And a lot of that's being done by public health and public health is doing its messaging, but that's all reviewed and overseen by the Board of Health. And that's why I wanted to protect the Board of Health's ability to continue doing that uninterrupted. I am generally pessimistic by nature. I don't know that even if this goes to the full board and passes there in referendum form, that the people will recognize it as a need. But I do see it as an opportunity for the community to at least become aware of the Board of Public Health again, to have them in conversation um, and learn more about things that they do. So I, I still intend to recommend it for final passage. Um, I'm open to amendments, but I don't think you need anything from me for the specialists um, thing that's, I believe, already within your authority. Um, and I'm only one of 15 aldermen, and I'm only one of several thousand Nashua's, Nashuans, so um, I'm going to push forward with it just because I think the foundational ideas uh, are still solid, but at the same time, I hope it's clear that I have a lot of respect for the current board that's serving and the work that you're all doing, and this isn't any intent on my part to either replace people or bring in politicians or anything like that because it's not really something I would have that much influence over ultimately. Um, so I guess I'm still going to make the motion only because I made the uh, ordinance and I still believe in it um, and then just see where it goes. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Okay. So um, Alderman Lopez. Yes. You want to make the motion? Oh, I make a motion to recommend final passage. Okay, so you heard the motion from Alderman Lopez for final passage of R-21-152. Any other comments from the committee? Alderwoman Kelly. Alderman Lopez, I'd like to ask if you'd be willing to put it to the board with no recommendation. Sure. Okay. okay. All right. So, motion is to send to the full board with no recommendation. Okay. Any questions on that from the board? No, just to elaborate, I don't, I, so my reasoning behind doing the no recommendation on the police commissioner one was because I literally intend to propose different um, amendments to try to see if we can reach an understanding. Um, but um, I didn't think that that particular uh, motion in its, in its present form is good enough to recommend and say this is it, that we did it. Um, in this particular case, it's more because if the Board of Health isn't supportive of it and doesn't have any particular amendments and isn't going to give it their confidence, then I'm going to say, okay, we'll judge it on its own merits and, and make a decision. So um, I will say I didn't make any of the foundational changes that the mayor did. And I would like to point out for posterity that I believe I made my, refer my um, referendum request uh, for the legal department before the mayor did. So my only intention was to expand it and then after a couple of email exchanges, I realized there was an opportunity to make sure that there was a more updated approach to medical disciplines that was represented. And I wasn't trying to represent all of them. I just figured we should aim for big ones. Okay. All right. So, okay. So you can still, all right. So the recommendation is to, the motion is to send this with no recommendation, which we can do. It doesn't matter whether you, you want to make changes or not. Um, so if there's nothing else, I'll have the clerk call the roll. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Kelly. It's a yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Okay. All right. So this um, piece of legislation will be brought forward to the Board of Aldermen next week with no recommendation. And thank you so much uh, for the three of you to you show up. Thank you. Okay, so. All right, so we'll, we'll go into public comment. Is there anyone out there that has public comment? I think they're all asleep. 
I don't uh, see anyone. Okay, <laughs> so no one. Uh, general discussion? Okay. Remarks by the Ooh. Alderman? I think Should we say nothing before him. No. I'm good. Okay. I, I thank you all for um, participating and listening to um, comments Ooh. by everyone. Um, so, no non Madam Clerk, no non public. I move to adjourn by roll call. Okay. You heard the motion. Ooh. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Lopez. You can yes. Right. Alderman Kelly's a yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Okay, motion carried, and the meeting is declared closed at 10.05 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Dinner time, yes. That's all, folks. Dinner time? I can't eat. I can't eat.